Good evening and welcome to the October 30, 2017 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please rise for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Jerry, you get to take the roll one more time? I'll take the roll one more time and I'll see how I do with Mr. Healy's name this time. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. DuPierre? Here. Ms. Hendrickson? Here. Ms. Saunders? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Mr. Bealey? Here. Ms. Oswald? Here. All right. Full house. Full house. Next item is approval of minutes from the October 10th, 2017 meeting. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Item number four, the Planning Board will conduct a public hearing to receive comment on the proposed amendments to Chapter 405, the Zoning Ordinance, to amend the ordinances for gender-neutral content. I'd like to introduce this, Jay? Oh, I don't think it takes much more of an introduction than what was given right there in the uh, title, but um, that's exactly what this is. Our Ordinance Committee has been working with our Assistant Town Manager to go through all the town's ordinances and looking at, there's a lot of reference to his or he as being physicians, and so they're um, looking to make that a gender neutral content throughout our ordinances. And the Shoreland Zoning Ordinance, actually, I'm sorry, we're starting with the Zoning Ordinance. Right. The Zoning Ordinance uh, is one of the ordinances that any changes require this board to hold a public hearing on, as is the next public hearing, the Shoreland Zone, which is, uh, essentially the same item, um, but obviously a different ordinance. So um, the proposal really calls for where it says his, it would say his slash her, or he, it would say he slash she, and so on, like that. So all with right. that, that's uh, all I have to offer at this yeah. point. Thank you, Jay. Um, with that, I will open the public hearing on this item. We have any takers for gender neutral ordinance language? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Any board discussion on this? Yes, Rachel. Uh, there are some times when a PhD in English comes in handy, and this is one of them. Uh, the use of the he slash she in uh, English is actually going out now, and we are apparently in the position of wanting to put it into our ordinances. Instead, um, the Oxford English Dictionary, Merriam-Webster's, the Associated Press, and the, uh, if you can think of the name, one of the grammarian societies, all have endorsed the word they or their as singular gender neutral pronouns so that we no longer need to deal with the decision, do we say he, she, hers, his, uh, and essentially render incomprehensible language in ordinances. I recommend that this go back to ordinance and that the word they or their be put in as appropriate. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll second that. Okay. I think it's, a, it's definitely, that'll take care of it. Susan seconds that. Um, so, process question for you, Jay. Is this, are we to understand that this is something that is happening across town documents more, more broadly? It, it is. So are there other committees or boards that are providing feedback on this as well? Um, so, as far as I understand it, everything has generated through our ordinance committee. And boy, you know, the number of ordinances, I could say, is probably in the order of 50 or so. Mm -hmm. um, but these are the only two that require a public hearing by an outside body. My understanding is council has held first reading on the changes sort of as a sort of a wholesale, holistic approach, if you will. They didn't go through sort of all 50 themselves. But um, so, yeah, I believe th you would be the only board probably providing okay. feedback. I, I can't say that with absolute certainty. This may be but, fortuitous uh, they picked the one with the an English PhD that's on it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if others have comments. I, I certainly, and I think I would probably speak for everyone, saying that we certainly support gender neutral pronouns. And I also um, support anything that makes the ordinances as readable 
as possible. And so to the extent that it is possible to get rid of kind of clunky constructions um, and that it's consistent with best practices um, beyond, beyond this room, then I would definitely support that. Anyone else? All right. And typically the board will, sorry, before just before you close that, um, uh, provide a recommendation. And so that would either be a re recommendation to the council. This would be going back to council uh, for their public hearing uh, and then ultimately a sec reading. Uh, so a recommendation might be a uh, recommendation to approve as received, uh, to, uh, to approve with conditions, or to deny. Um, those are really sort of the three typical ways of going about it, and it sounds like we're talking about a approved with conditions or reconsideration at least. I guess reconsideration would yeah. be the way to put it. Okay. I think that would be the concise way to with the instructions articulate mm -hmm. it. Right. Suspect this next item will look very similar, but it is technically a different item. So I'll introduce uh, item number five. The planning board will conduct a public hearing to receive comment on the proposed amendments to chapter 405C, the Shoreland Zoning Ordinance, to amend the ordinances for gender neutral content. And I'll let everything you said except about the Shoreland Zone there you go. Ordinance, right? Okay. And presumably our recommendation will be similar? Yes, um, I would appreciate it if uh, the recommendation I made for the prior ordinance be included for this. Um, I suppose I should formally open a public hearing. Look here. So, if anyone does have any comment on this, feel free to come on up. Seeing none, I will close that public hearing. Is there any further comment on this one? A little change of pace for us. All right. <laughs> do we need to, for the record, do we need to? I think it would be just right. for the record to make what your recommendation is. So uh, the board is uh, recommending approval with instructions to reconsider the actual mechanics um, per what Ms. Hendrickson described. Thank you. All All right. Right. Minutes won't reflect something that wasn't actually said. All right. <laughs> As we'll do it right. Thank you. Uh, item number mm -hmm. six. Unitil Northern Utilities, Inc. requests a site plan review and shoreland zoning review for a gate station on Eastern Road, map R73, lot 18. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. So as you just noted, this is an application by Unitil for a gate station, which I'm sure they can describe better than I will be able to, but as I understand it, takes sort of their transmission gas system and puts it into, uh, converts it so it can go into a more local distribution system. Um, this is project is proposed in the Resource Protection District, um, which is part of our shoreland zoning and is considered an essential service. So within our shoreland zoning, we have certain standards that need to be reviewed by this board for this activity. Um, the shoreland zone identifies the planning board as the permitting authority for this type of activity. And so, um, Staff comments laid out a number of those for you to, to look at. Um, and I think really the, the essence of staff comments are really sort of around ensuring the board is comfortable with sort of the buffering uh, and landscaping uh, with the proposal as well as lighting. We'll note that the uh, re shoreland zone typically requires a minimum lot size of 30,000 square feet. Um, but the applicant has been before our Board of Appeals and received approval for the 16,000 square foot lot that they're proposing to put this essential service on. Um, so I just want to make that note uh, for the record uh, that that process has been completed. Um, so with that, Mr. Chair, like I said, you should have received some staff comments and I'll turn it back to you. Okay. Thank you and I'll hand it over to the applicant or their representative. Good evening. My name is Sean Donahue. I'm with VHB of South Portland. Also with me here this evening is uh, Bob Shumrick of Unitil. He's a project manager for this project. And David Woodward of VHB. David is the senior project manager and uh, landscape architecture for the project. So um, just briefly to introduce the project, um, it is, as noted, a um, natural gas facility to interconnect the natural gas transmission system that currently exists in the um, eastern 
road right away with the local distribution system. The facility um, would include two fenced areas, the first being a mainline valve facility um, shown here. Um, on this plan, so this heading on this direction, sort of to this side of the plan, would be heading out towards eastern, uh, to uh, Black Point Road. This way heads down to the eastern trail just to sort of get you orientated there. So there would be a 15 by 25 foot fence facility with a crushed gravel surface um, and above ground facility piping. It would be fenced. Um, that would serve as an interconnection point between the existing natural gas transmission pipeline to the gate station <coughs> facility. From this point, there would be subsurface piping to connect the mainline valve to the gate station facility. The gate station facility <coughs> would be 45 feet by 105 feet in area. Um, it would be fenced in with a crushed gravel surface. Um, it would have landscaping and a decorative fence buffer as well. And um, we've got the uh, facility described in more detail in the application, which you all have available to you. So at this point, I'll let you um, ask the questions you may have of us. Thank you. Yep. Um, first, we do have the opportunity for public comment, not a formal public hearing, but if anyone does have any uh, comment they'd like to make on this, feel free to come on up. Right, no takers. Uh, Nick, do you have anything on this? Not a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll see if my colleagues spark anything, but not a whole lot of that here. Okay. Roger? Um, I guess the only, I don't really have much either, other than the two, uh, the two, um, uh, two points brought up on the uh, staff's comments. One was about the fenced-in area and the necessity of having uh, barbed wire, uh, barbed wire on top. Is, how critical is that? Um, that is really an essential, critical piece of keeping a deterrent from people entering the gate station facility or the valve facility unauthorized. It's really needed for safety purposes. And the other, the other thing that came up was the 20-foot um, the LED floodlight. Mm -hmm. Yes, so there, there would be a light located over the SCADA cabinet, which is um, for controlling the facility. It would be 20 feet off the ground, illuminated um, at a 35 degree tilt. So that would have it illuminating this area towards the yard, um, away from the residences that are being constructed over here and existing residences um, to the northeast along Eastern Road. Um, the sort of lighting area would include the yard and some of the adjacent area around the yard. There is a um, photometric plan included in the, the application. Okay, so that won't, that won't give off excessive glare, you know. It's, it's not a work light. It's, it's sort of a safety um, illuminating light. So it's not, a, not intended to produce a, a wide range of light. The light footprint, as shown in the um, photometric plan, covers the yard, um, would extend a little bit into the eastern road right away, and then out along the perimeter of the um, defense area. Okay. Susan? Um, I'm assuming that <coughs> if any, anybody needs to come and service this, the parking would be in the um, established parking lot that already exists. So service vehicles, you can see that there's a gravel access drive that would key in. So the service vehicles for you know, under maintenance and operation purposes would pull into the <coughs> access drive. There is a gate here that would allow them to enter and park here. Okay. Um, I'm just a little, <coughs> when it comes to anything that has to do with architecture or landscaping, I get fussy. Looking at these two photos, there are three different colors. Mm -hmm. Which one are we using, all three, or? Well, that's a good question. Um. One is saddlewood. I think it says saddlewood. One says headwood, and one says nothing. <laughs> it's a, whatever you'd like to call it. One moment, we're looking for the answer. At first, I thought it was going to be answer. different on different sides. That doesn't make any sense to me, that mm -hmm. we would use different on different sides. So, you know, it's just a matter of particular, we would like to know what we're going to get. <laughs> In terms of the color? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> if, you, if you can add that as a condition, that'll be fine. 
Yeah, we can. Yeah, I don't, we, can, I don't, we can come back to that. We don't need to. We don't okay. need to take up time for it. Okay. It, it would be intended to resemble a natural wood color, right. you know, whether, whether <coughs> it right. would be at the lighter or darker end. I didn't say just now. Okay. It also, just to make sure that I'm on the right page, when we get around to what will be the back of this, the closest to the um, marsh area, it's going to be black vinyl clad. That's right. As so opposed to wood. So there, there would be black vinyl clad fencing, or chain link black vinyl clad around the whole facility, and then that would be faced with the um, the cambium series what decorative fencing <coughs> on all of it, all the way on three sides. Three so the sides. three sides would be yep. this side, the one along Eastern Road, and then on the uh, north side here. This side would remain open. I shouldn't say open. There would be the um, you know the uh, chain link fence, the black vinyl clad chain link on this side, but not the Okay. the wood um, decorative type. And then lastly, it's a, it's a um, <coughs> I don't know what's going on here, <coughs> landscaping question. Um, white fir, is, I'm not familiar with white fir, is it the same thing as white pine? Uh, fir would be different than pine, but I'll let Dave elaborate. That's why we have them here. So I can it's not the same as white okay, pine. My problem is that white pine Drops all of it right. lower, and this this will not do that. No. That's all I really no. care about. Thank you. I'm all set. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Robin. <coughs> um, so you're very close to the wetlands here. That's right. Um, how close will your disturbed area come to the protected natural resource? The disturbed area comes quite close to it, but okay. does not enter it. So it would be within a few feet of the boundary. So talk um, to me about the erosion sedimentation controls that you'll have sure. in place during construction, yep. please. Yep. So there would be a, a line of silt fencing, um, stake hay bales, and a silt fencing as needed around the edge of the disturbance footprint, which essentially comes along this line here. As it approaches the wetland, goes around the wetland, and then wraps back around. So all that downslope area would be enclosed by stake hay bales or um, stake silt or silt fence installed. Because you're so close, mm -hmm. I'm I'm gonna. I, I guess I have a question for staff. That mm -hmm. I, I'd like to request double mm -hmm. double la barriers. double layers. Um, and I'd like to have a detail in here of how mm -hmm. they're going to be keyed in, whether it's the hay bales or the erosion sedimentation control. Because mm -hmm. um, what's your total disturbed area? The total disturbed area, well, the total lot area is 13,440 square feet. Right. So the disturbed area would be half that? In, in that. Well, I would say a little more than half because the okay. the um, grading comes close to the limits of the, okay. the lot area. But we do have a detail in, in the plan. Okay, and, did I miss it? Um, it I probably it's did. It's possible, but we have it right here, and okay. um, we may be able to answer some of those questions. There, there's an inset showing mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. silt fence detail here, staked in. Okay. So <coughs> it's silt fence, but there's not the hay bale mm -hmm. that you're talking about. So that's two separate structures. So that's correct. Okay. So do you have a detail for the hay bale? We don't. Okay. And you know, when I said silt fence, I meant sort of silt fence or hay bale mm -hmm. as needed. Oftentimes, contractors will sort of okay. put what what is most appropriate for the site. Okay. Um, so do we know what contractor it will be? Will it be Unitil and their, <coughs> and their staff, or will it be uh, sub -Dow? So they do subcontract the work. The, the gas work, the live gas work, is attended to by Unitil, mm -hmm. but the construction work that does not involve live gas work is done by contractors that are, are working for Unitil. Okay, so we'll have a subcontractor on site. We'll have Unitil on site. Um, I guess I have a question for staff now. Mm -hmm. um, Angela, are you comfortable with asking for double sediment barrier due to the close proximity? Is it overkill? What other is it? Will there be a pre-construction meeting? All yes. of the above. I think we do pre-construction now for all projects, so that's something that we can talk we can talk about during that. Okay. Um, and if you want specifically, because this is. I would say a wetland of special significance, most likely, um, and typically we would do that on, you know, streams or others where they need the double um, wall of protection. Yep. Um, so I don't think that's a far stretch where this is. Okay. 
Okay. Um, such a significant amount of wetlands. Uh -huh. And I'd like to know too that because you're in the shoreland zone, mm -hmm. that means that you need to have a DEP, a certified contractor that's been trained by the DEP mm -hmm. in erosion and sedimentation control within the shoreland zone. Mm -hmm. So if you could provide that evidence to the okay. town as well, that would be greatly appreciated. Sure. All set? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Rachel? Yeah, I'd just like to go back to the fence and the barbed wire for uh, a moment. and. Is the barbed wire to keep out people or critters? People, yep. So it would be a deterrent to any, you know, curious individual that wanted to enter the, the facility. And, you know, barbed wire on the top of a chain link fence is a pretty standard um, specification for any kind of critical energy infrastructure. You know, by comparison, say, like an electric substation, it's, it's commonplace and it's really there for public safety. It is a residential area. There are children around. There's more houses being built. So without that being there, it just really doesn't provide the level of deterrent um, that would be you know, appropriate for a facility like this. Is, is the barbed wire upright or slanted at an angle? It's angled. Out so in? Slanted outward. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you want me to clarify? Uh, no, I think I got it. All right. Uh, yeah, other than that, I was just, I'm good. Okay. Thanks, Rick. Yeah, I don't really have anything to add. Um, I agree with the concern uh, voiced by Ms. Saunders on, on the, uh, the proximity to the, to the wetlands and appreciate the sensitivity on your part to that as well. Um, we agreed that um, we'll work out the details or you can work out the details with staff to confirm the, the color of the, uh, of the of the fence, and then you're looking for sort of a, a natural look there. Uh, Bob, do you, can you elaborate on this a little bit in terms of whether another light would be needed? When, as staff looked at the photometrics plan, it did seem to create qu uh, quite a bit of light, sort of in the uh, as we're looking at the plan, sort of the right-hand corner. The photometrics plan seemed to go dark in the back half, or or more of the project, and I don't know if that was just a, it, it, it's hard to tell exactly what was happening with the photometrics plan, because it did seem to get be pretty bright, and then the, the, the uh, lumens 
seem to drop right down pretty quickly. Um, so, uh, and I, I just wanted to add to um, with the angle they were talking about. You know, obviously there's resonance around, but we also talk a lot with the board about the glow that comes mm -hmm. from Oak Hill. Um, there is ways to do both. There's ways to keep, get rid of that angle, but have a house side shield. Mm -hmm. So um, that you can do you can do both. I guess is what I'm saying. Is this what is meant by the first condition that you were sent around? Uh, so I, I guess that first condition was uh, have it be the, sure that the board had a discussion, and if the board's comfortable with proposed, we can strike this condition and, and craft it as a waiver. Um, but at this point, yes, the way we crafted it was given the board's general mm -hmm, interest mm -hmm. in ensuring that all lights are full cutoff. And I know in some past applications, when they've been close to the marsh in particular, the board's also had. Um, some other um, that's been a consideration. I want to say thank you to thank staff you. for bringing it up because um, I would have been very upset to have discovered that we didn't cover that yeah. <coughs> when it was built. So thank you. <coughs> I, I would be not inclined to support a waiver in that it's me that's usually bringing it up on behalf of the wildlife and habitat issues. So um, I, I would not necessarily support a waiver, but if <coughs> staff feels like <coughs> cut off. There's, there's appropriate blockage or cut off based on lumen you know, the lumens. <laughs> then we, I would trust trust the staff to have that discretion. But I'm not generally in support. Well, they're asking I for it to. The condition number one is asking for it not to have <coughs> to have make sure that it's properly angled to be full cut off. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I, I have the photometric plan no, here, so I can show you sort of where those. The, the lumens drop off. Need to get into it. You can bear with me just one moment no, while I no. get that out. We don't need it. Yeah, we, I don't think we need to get. I think we, I think we all kind of understand the, the, the basic dynamics and issue. Um, so yeah, just to make sure, the, the language is a little bit confusing, but the condition as stated in the draft motion that I think everyone now has um, would be that. The applicant work with staff to, to, to come up with a, a full cutoff approach. Um, is that something that the applicant is is prepared to, to work with staff on? Okay. Oh, again, Bob Shermuk of Unitil. Uh, yeah, we we were prepared, as Angela said, um, that to change the light to have a backlight, uplight shield, um, and also to eliminate the tilt. Okay. Yeah, great. Thank you. And thanks, Jay, for yes. re-highlighting that for us, so to speak. All right, with mm -hmm. that, we're going to here. Here? Yep, yep, okay. All right. Pretty much, I can figure it out. I'm doing this live. <laughs> doing this live. All right. I move to approve the project titled Unitil Eastern Road Gate Station proposed by Unitil Northern Utilities LLC as depicted on plan set prepared by Process Pipeline Services dated July 14, 2017 with the final findings and conditions. I'm not going to read uh, all the findings, but they will be part of the record. Uh, the first condition, coordinate final details to ensure lighting fixtures are properly angled to be full cutoff and to include house side shields. Number two, prior to the start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer, and their site contractor, and is to be coordinated through the planning department. Number three, the final, cover, final color of fence detail to be approved by town staff. And number four, provide double sediment details during construction, detail to be reviewed and approved by staff. Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? Yes. Uh, did we want to, uh, there was a request for the contractor to provide like, training mm. certification? Yeah, to, it's the contractor to must be DEP so certified. part of the conditions or, or is that, that just part of the site when you meet with them? The pre-construction like, meeting? Pre meeting? If it's in the shoreland, is it? That, that would have been my It was already required. Yeah, it's okay. required and they'll be, you can bring it up at pre-construction mm -hmm. meeting, certainly. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Any other discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you.
Item number seven. Matthew Chamberlain requests final subdivision approval for Yellow Birch Estates, 203 Holmes Road, Assessor's Map R23, Lot 16. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as you just noted, uh, this is for a final subdivision review of White Birch Estates. Uh, the board actually granted preliminary approval of this uh, subdivision back in October. This is a residential sub subdivision in the RF and Aquifer Protection Overlay District. Um, given the characteristics of the site, it does trigger our um, conservation subdivision design review criteria. So the board has been through those items um, during the preliminary review process. Um, so just by way of sort of knocking the dust off a few of the items that the board looked at in considering this. One of the major elements have been around site access and coming in off Holmes Road. I know that was a, a point of discussion for the board um, that you've looked at and their uh, traffic engineer has made some recommendations for some improvements along the right of way to enhance those sight lines. Um, let's see, at this point staff has sort of few remaining comments and many of them are sort of around final technical details um, that I'm sure if you have questions, Angela would be happy to touch on. Um, and then just some other final coordination of plan <coughs> notes and location of street trees and such. Um, so with that, Mr. Chair, I'll turn it back to you. Thanks, Jay. Um, we have the applicant here. Yes, good evening. My name is Paul Gabbush. I prepared the site plan that you have in front of you this evening, and Matt Chamberlain is also here. So if we have, I'm here for any questions the board might have. Okay. Nice, concise presentation. <laughs> we like that. Excellent. And use the light while we have it. Um, any board comments or questions on this? Rick, do you have anything? You know, I looked it over and it, it's, it's fun. Okay. Rachel? Yeah, I note that um, a a letter came in from a member of the public uh, with, a, with uh, continued concerns about the uh, condition of Holmes Road and the safety issues uh, and a potential school bus stop. And I'm wondering if there's been any further thought about improvements that could be made along Holmes Road. I note, Jay, that you said uh, uh, what did you say? You said something <coughs> probably profound and wise. Uh, <laughs> I that, uh, that. That, um, that improvements would be anticipated, but mm -hmm. what are we talking about? Um, so maybe I'll turn to the applicant's engineer to describe what they're Do the traffic report, but I believe what we're going to be doing is clearing a little shrub and scrub brush along the road and also adding a sign showing that there will be a new road entrance to that location. So um, that's what I'm aware of that the traffic engineer came up with kind of cleaning up some of the uh, trees along the road and uh, for better sight distance and putting a sign to show that there was going to be an uh, intersection at that point. Have you uh, asked the uh, school department about potential bus stops and where those stops might occur? I have not. <clears throat> That's it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Robin, um, just one question about the timeline. Could you let us know when construction will break ground? Yep, I'll let Matt handle that one. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Uh, if we get preliminary uh, final approval tonight, uh, my site guy is prepared to start cutting trees in the next seven days. Okay. We'll have the road built 100% this calendar year, and base coat will go down in the spring. Okay. And. Um, Maybe this one's for Paul. How many stormwater features do you have again, and, and will any of them be constructed this winter? Yeah, we have two stormwater basins. Um, I haven't really thought about the phasing of construction for those. Okay. I would anticipate that that would be um, at the same time that they're constructing the road. Okay. Um, right. Just if, if in your pre-construction meeting that you have with staff, if you could just be, um, provide them with the sequencing of events. Thanks. Thanks, Robin. Yep. Nick? Roger? Um, the, only, the only thing I have is um, I just want to, is the sign on Holmes Road, is that a firm 
that that's going to be definitely that's one part of the, the Yep, that's part of the plan that they've put together. And so as, as everything else on the plan, where the lots are located, where the open space is, that is part of the... And that, that sign's going to be for traffic heading towards Beach Ridge? Uh, I need bus, to... Uh, uh, whatever, the soccer if the, I can get this to open... If I can get this to open up, I can demonstrate for you. But I believe the sign is... Yeah, I, my system is not cooperating. Uh, and, and the applicant the confirm? Applicant. Actually, yep. I, I'm not 100% sure which direction that the uh, engineer had specified it, but w whatever it calls for is where we'll put it. I'm, I'm thinking of um, when I was out there, it seemed to me that the danger w uh, was uh, vehicles coming towards Beach Ridge because they're coming up around that bend. Versus coming here. Right, and, and that would be my synopsis as well. But um, wh whatever whatever it calls for yeah. is are exactly what we'll put. Are it. those uh, yellow directional, you know, like curve? They are going, going okay. out. Yeah, going Home to towards Broadstreet. Okay, all right. Um, and then just the, uh, one last thing is on the harvest plan. That's you're, you're talking primarily the pine trees. <coughs> pine Correct. Trees. Yes. Not, the, the, not the, the, the four store the four store that went up to the property made a determination that generally the pine trees that are there are at the end of their natural life and one place to go is to die and fall okay. um, so he thought it would be best to start selectively removing some of those so that the, the undergrowth the hardwood can get a little okay. bit better hold uh, and that's why we're also going to be replacing um, on the street with the uh, smaller caliper hardwoods okay uh, I'm all set thanks Susan I need help from staff. Um, I'm getting a really funny feeling, and I've been around long enough that when it happens, I need to verbalize it. <clears throat> I'm not really convinced of the safety of that entrance, and the thing that came to us late just before the meeting <clears throat> pretty much uh, reinforces what I've been thinking all along. We were there. It's busy. People go. The cars go by rapidly. Um, I don't know what would be needed to um, ensure, and that's the word I think I need to use, to ensure that at that curve, we've done everything that we can to make it as safe as possible, and I don't think removing vegetation is going to do it. So I don't know what it is I want done. Um, I don't want the applicant to have to go out and spend thousands and thousands of dollars. I don't know whether or not just widening the road at that curve <coughs> would create the kind of margin of safety I'm looking for. So if I'm, if I'm making a mountain out of a molehill, I really would appreciate being told that. <laughs> and it, it does seem at the staff level that there's maybe some sophisticated, a little more sophisticated approach. I would appreciate knowing about it. I don't know that staff has any great silver bullets for this one. We know <laughs> they're traffic engineer provided what um, they said would provide at least sight lines for 45 miles an hour, if I recall. Our <coughs> peer review traffic engineer reviewed their proposal and suggested that it met at least the sight distance standards. Um, beyond that, we really haven't had much discussion at the staff level about you know, the sort of greater context of, of the street, uh, of you know, and, and what you know, what type of improvements might be made made to make it uh, more accommodating, or or what have you. So it, it okay. sounds like your your issues is more about those on the main road, because what they're addressing is is taking a left or right out of the side street, which is why he's talking about doing you know cutting back the shrub right. and in the swales and things like that, so that they <coughs> can see, so someone isn't jumping out in front of a vehicle that's moving fast. But it sounds like really the concern is maybe the, the curves along right. Holmes mm -hmm. Road. And and that's, that's much more like what I'm thinking because yeah. if we are talking about this being a development that will have children, that will have a school bus stopping there, mm -hmm. <coughs> what's going to be happening on, as the bus is, goes, I, we don't know whether it will be stopping on the road or coming down into the development at this point, do we? No, and, and I think, I mean, to their point, um, for for the school department transportation, they're not going to be able to really tell you that until there's actually children in that development to know where or when they stop. 
can we put something in there that says to watch for? I mean, I don't know what I'm after. It feels too loose to me. It doesn't feel as if we're being, we're asking for anything that's going to <clears throat> take care of what is potentially a problem. Now, I know we can't make everything 100% safe. I, I'm not a big fan of kids having to wear helmets when they climb trees, for example, but um, I seem to be the, yes. I could help in any way. Please help. <laughs> If, if anything gives you peace of mind, I, I like that the applicant has gone ahead and had their study, their traffic study conducted at a speed limit that exceeds what the actual speed limit of the road is. So it's almost like the traffic study was based on what the traffic was traveling at, not necessarily what it's posted at. And then on top of it, if you do hit a development with a new development and there is a problem, we have enforcement and we've, I know I've seen them on Holmes Road before, mm -hmm. and I think usually a message gets sent after a week okay. or two of patrolling, and okay. people learn to slow it down a little. I appreciate it. I think that this is just me saying, every once in a while, because there isn't any specific thing that we can do, I don't say anything, but I'm uncomfortable, and I just hope the applicant will make sure that everything is done that can possibly be done. Make I'm a father of 11-year-old triplet girls. Um, I know you I are. I can appreciate. Are they going um, to be living there? Watching cars drive by the bus stops when they're flashing. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. The only other thing I'm wondering is, um, is, is staff comfortable with the uh, tree um, situation, for lack of a better word? Yeah, I think we'll. There, there is going to be there is so a plan. They have suggested that they will put in street trees. We would um, sort of ask that we see the final location be determined on a plan, um, realizing that it may need to be field verified um, during construction. But uh, it's much easier to be sure it's established on the plan set early, and that way, when and if one does okay. need to get adjusted slightly, our town engineer uh, can work with them on that. Okay. So that would be. A condition that staff has prepared should the board be comfortable moving forward in that direction. And the harvesting and referencing um, plan has you, it's been okayed by staff? Um, so, yep, and, and actually the board had a bit of discussion around the harvest yeah. plan. I believe you missed the last meeting, but um, okay. and, and the board was comfortable with that. Staff Fine. has reviewed it. And I'm all set then. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, just picking up briefly on the, the <laughs> site access and, and the safety question, um, I, wanted to, I want to note just for the record, first off, that the, the letter that's been referenced here, uh, or emails from uh, Wally Fengler, um, we appreciate that, that uh, input, and that'll certainly be part of the record. Um, you know, as Susan and others were alluding to, this sort of issue can be tricky because it's a case where the proposal meets the letter of, of everything in terms of visibility and, and everything else. And I think when it comes to that gray area, we each, we each have, that, that sort of goes beyond that, we each kind of have our own thresholds. So I definitely appreciate that concern and share that. Um, I do appreciate the point made by Mr. McGee about the, the, speed, at, the speed that was assumed um, in the, the analysis, because sometimes that's a Often, I'd say that's a that's something that we tend to pick mm -hmm. out and say, well, it, nobody actually drives 35 miles an hour down that stretch. So I, that was a, uh, a valid point to make. Um, and I guess I'm generally of the mind, um, sort of articulated by by Nick, that um, it's something that I think people, everyone involved, needs to be mindful of, and and the town as a whole will need to sort of monitor it and take whatever action might be needed if, if there seem to be issues there. Um, but I think the applicants, you know, definitely um, definitely done everything that they need to do to comply with, with the ordinances. So um, we appreciate that. Um, I think we've touched on the harvest plan pretty thoroughly and that's been well vetted. Um, so beyond that, I don't think um, I have any remaining questions or issues and we do have a, a motion here. Um, I move to approve the project titled Yellow Birch Estates, proposed by Matthew Chamberlain, as depicted on plan set prepared by Paul P. Gadbois, dated October 7th, 2017, with the following findings, waivers, and conditions. Uh, once again, I will not read the findings, but they'll be in the record. Pretty boilerplate. Um, 
the waiver, given the limited number of lots within the subdivision and, and the dead end road design, the waiver request to reduce the roadway width from 24 feet to 22 feet is approved. Conditions, number one, prior to the signing and release of the Mylar, the plan shall be revised to address the following. A, technical revisions to plan note 15 on sheet 11. B, technical revisions to the detail associated with the embedded 15 inch wetland crossing culvert. C, specific locations for the proposed street trees are provided and approved by the planning department. D, the maintenance and inspection plan included in the plan set as sheet 11 of 11 shall be provided as a separate document that can be included in any homeowners association documents as they will have future responsibility for the proposed stormwater systems. Condition number two, prior to the release of the attested final subdivision plan to the ap applicant for recording at the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds, the applicant shall pay the traffic impact fees. And the third condition, a recreation contribution in the amount of $250 shall be paid on a lot by lot basis prior to the issuance of the building permit. And we actually do have a fourth condition which is that prior to the start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer and their site contractor, and is to be coordinated through the planning department. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. All right. We're shifting gears. Item number eight. Housing Initiatives of New England Corp. requests a site plan and subdivision review for Besley <laughs> Commons 2 Senior Housing, 1 Besley School Drive, Assessor's Map U41, Lot 2. Jay? Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as you just noted, this proposal is before you for an expansion <coughs> at the uh, Besley Commons, which is the old Besley School, uh, for an expansion out there. Um, the site was initially approved back in about 2006, I believe it was, um, for the first phase of the development. Um, should be noted that the property that this is on is actually owned by the town, but the um, Al 54, the applicant, has a lease agreement that allows for this type of development and even contemplated a second phase of development. Um, and so staff has reviewed that lease and finds that this is consistent with that proposal and allowance, and so um, they're moving forward accordingly. Um, we'll note that in addition to, that this is really, uh, there's gonna be a subdivision amendment component to this application, but really it's gonna be our site plan review ordinance criteria that will govern. I think we've had a number of projects like this uh, recently, so the board uh, should be fairly familiar with that process where our site plan review ordinance standards get a little more in depth uh, in detail um, regarding sort of those details. Um, let's see, so you will have received a series of staff comments from planning staff as well as Woodard and Kern, our peer reviewers, and Bill Bray, traffic solutions, uh, looking at the uh, traffic impacts. Um, in particular, as staff reviewed the plans, um, you know, there's still some details to be ironed out, but there seems to be, you know, we're, we're heading in a pretty good direction with what's being proposed. Um, did just want to bring to the board's attention that some, really, in, in reviewing this application, staff would just bring to the board's attention and, and uh, <coughs> sort of the forefront of consideration sort of the impact to abutting properties. Um, though this is a residential use, it is obviously, um, you know, a, large building and there's some parking, so ensuring that we have adequate uh, buffering and sort of consideration of lighting uh, given some of the uh, neighboring uh, residential uses. Um, and then I guess the other thing I've, we want to bring to the board's attention has to do with their stormwater design and, and maybe I'll ask Angela to, to weigh in on that and then um, uh, staff I'll conclude staff's comments at this point anyway. Okay. Thanks, Jay. Angela? Yep, there's um, a couple of um, pretty technical 
comments and Winter and Kearns, and then um, in staff comments I've put um, a couple of more general, um, but it really shows that um, I guess the highlight is that there is a slight increase of peak um, flow rates from the site, and so it's something that I know the board has been sensitive to in the past. Um, we also, looking at how that is designed, and I know it's an existing pond, but they're actually um, modifying the outlet control structure, so there's opportunities, I think, to, to maybe revisit that and, and how the system is, um, is set up, as well as looking at the rainfall data, which um, not using the most current rainfall data currently, so that might change some of those numbers, too. So we just want to make sure that we have some back and forth, and um, it sounds like the applicant has already seen our, has talked about our comments and that are willing to kind of work through that with staff. But at this point, there are some, some technical loose ends. Thank you. I guess I just okay. wanted to, do want to note that um, staff did receive today uh, a, a package of response to staff comments. We didn't have time to give those a, a thorough, thorough review, but again, as Angela just alluded to, clearly the applicant has seen those and has started to give those some due consideration, so um, I'm sure they'll highlight those which they uh, have questions about otherwise, and hopefully uh, most of them made sense. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you. And I'll turn it over to Ms. Taylor. Thank you. My name is uh, Cindy Taylor, and I'm the President of Housing Initiatives, but I as part of our presentation tonight, um, Rick Cheney, our attorney, is here, and he is going to make a presentation on the ownership structure, just so that you understand how this is all going to come together. I also have uh, George Levine from CWS Architects here with me, and Kurt Newfield, who is our civil engineer, who will speak about the stormwater directly. I'd like to just touch on some of our, our um, high points for our design. We have a rendering here tonight that I think starts to... Um, show you how we're trying to incorporate the design for phase two with phase one, the materials, the brick, the white clapboards, the, the very similar feeling that we have going on um, BESI one, the addition to the school um, is going to be continued into our second building. I think that um, you, as was noted uh, in the presentation by staff, the, we contemplated having a phase two when we developed phase one, and so we actually created two lots. And um, the, there were three lots in our original subdivision because as part of the town parcel, uh, we have control through a 99-year lease on, um, on two of those lots, one of which uh, the one that the school sits on is 2.75 acres, and lot two is 4.4 acres, and I think there was a mistake in... I think those numbers were trans just turned uh, the 4.4, the I think, in the staff report came out as 4.14. And so I just wanted to clarify that um, in terms of actual. Um, the, I think the important thing to note here, uh, again, is we did have our wetlands uh, mapped. We were using wetlands mapping in our original presentation in the plans that you, you've seen. Um, I didn't realize how wetlands do change, but in fact they do change, especially when you introduce controls on stormwater. Uh, and I have also learned in the last week how much more uh, precise mapping of wetlands is with the GPS systems. So we have that. Um, you'll see that in the presentation tonight, and uh, you'll see that in the final plan. Um, Cindy, we have a handheld that, mic that might oh, that make life a little easier for you. Thank you. So primarily what you see here in our rendering is what you'll see when you drive up our driveway. And so our initial attempt to lay this plan out, both when we did our first phase in, uh, with phase one and two, and now, uh, although we have tweaked the actual site plan quite a bit from our original, um, the idea is to create a porch-like front for people to really identify the front of this building. It, there's uh, nothing worse than coming into a campus and not knowing where to go. So I think this will be visually very clean and very simple to tell where the front entrance is. 
The other very important issue for us was the, the site itself. Uh, this particular site that the building sits on is a flat baseball field. But the other part of the site is a rising hill. And so um, I'm just going to show you this site plan that shows the landscape being rendered and so forth. But this is our entrance drive. And for any of you, I don't know if all of you have driven to the what we call the front of Bessie Commons 1. But it's not the side that you see from Route 1. Because the other side is south. You have a nice patio out there. We have a, a nice entrance, a nice drop-off facility. And so what we were trying to do is do the same thing here, where you actually come around a, um, a turn. And you have a perfect place for guests and residents to be dropped off. Um, this is extremely important um, for our, a lot of our residents, because a lot of them use bus service. And we have a, our local bus that does service this property. So the other issue that became abundantly clear um, with Bessie One were that people would like to be able to, if their apartment is here, they'd like to be able to see their car. They'd like to have as, as an immediate access getting into the building in the winter time as possible. And so what we've done is we tried to create a focal point here with landscaping focal point on this side where there'll be a nice patio, and then two entrances that'll be private entrances for the people that live here so that they can park here and get into the building as quickly as possible. But the guest parking is here, and it's really important to provide guest parking for these people because the last thing we want them to do is not to have people visit them. Some of our residents don't have family, but the, for those who do, we want to make it as convenient as possible. So. Um, <coughs> That we could, we're going to reserve this for parking for guests, and they'll come immediately into the building. This end of the building will have our, our um, uh, intercom system, so it will be a secured access. These will be keyed access for residents only. So I've got one more plan I'd just like to share with you, and then I'm going to turn this over. And this plan is not as strong as I would like today. We had uh, no power in our office, no access to our computers. But um, this is a composite plan that um, Sightlines did for us. And, it, and it's, it may be difficult to see, but this is the existing school. This is Route 1. This is the addition that drops down over the hill, and we use an elevator to get our residents to the community spaces that are basically in the front of the building. Um, so you come up this private drive, or it is now a public street. There's a T-turn, uh, hammerhead turn here for the public street. We actually get our frontage, the 75 feet of frontage on that T-turn. That was something that we had designed a long time ago when we, had, when we created the two lots. Um, and then we come off that with our drop off to the building. But I also wanted to point out the fact that we've we tried to get this entrance as close to this building as possible without, without taking away from the parking that's currently serving these people. So we've moved it as close to this lot line. This is our lot two line right here. And so we, we're going to have some shared parking. This will be the new parking. This is existing parking that goes with this building. Um, we've actually lost a few uh, spaces here. We've lost four spaces here. We're going to create five more that will go with Bessie One. And then we'll have cross easements. Um, but I, I think there's uh, one question that I have. In the TVC2 zone, um, there is a, it dis there's a discussion on a campus approach where you have multiple buildings. And there's a discussion on the way that the buildings are sited uh, with relevance to the street. We have taken the approach that this is more like a campus and that the pedestrian access will be along this line. We actually have some great walking opportunities. Um, currently, our residents come out here. They come to Route 1 this way. They, they can come all the way around here. This is a great walking trail. They go down. They cross Route 1 at Sawyer, which is the safest place for them to get to the municipal park. We would anticipate the same thing here. So we will create uh, sidewalks that will come back around so that they can join in utilizing both buildings. Both these people are welcome to come to this one and vice versa. Um, and then we have the continuous walkways. 
these woods are phenomenal. I'm, you can see these are the new areas for the wetlands. But if you go down there, when I was growing up, this was the Girl Scout camp. And it looks exactly like that <laughs> right now. I'd invite anybody to walk down there. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, they do have wet vegetation, but it's not standing water. So if this is all a hill. It all slopes back down to Commerce Drive and um, actually to uh, the um, development along the Old Eastern. But that being said, I, I wanted to point out that we have this pedestrian access that we're really keying into. And then we have an access that comes into our lower parking lot at Bessie Square um, with a, a nice set of stairs that goes up to, to, the, um, to the retail development and the restaurants and so forth. So that's our pedestrian connection. And I just wanted to point out the campus kind of look. And I, my question to you is, you know, do we have to meet a, an absolute setback here on a street? Because it's, it's kind of irrelevant the way we're, we're designed it from a design standpoint, but you allow both in your zoning and it's quite confusing. So I'll leave that one for future conversation. Um, <coughs> I think what I'd like to do right now is ask Rick um, Shanae to come up and just talk a little bit about the structure of our um, ownership. Uh, good evening. Uh, Rick Shanae with Drummond Woods, whom I represent housing uh, initiatives of New England and its um, affiliated entities with respect to this project. Um, Cindy just asked me to run through the leasing slash ownership situation here, uh, just so the, the record is clear. The original tenant from the town was Bessie School Senior Housing Corporation, and it leased essentially the two lots that make up the project as a whole. Um, given the nature of the financing that's involved in this project, tax credit related financing, it's necessary to do, even though it's a unified project, it has to be done by two different limited partnerships to accommodate the uh, type of financing. So the original lease was assigned to Bessie Commons Corporation, which in turn sublet lot one or f the phase one section of the project to Bessie School Limited Partnership. So that entity got the financing to renovate the school, do the addition, um, and that of course is done and operational. Phase two will be uh, sublet by Bessie Commons Corporation to Bessie Commons Roman II LP. Similar concept but separate um, sub lessee, that entity will, will do the project and obtain the necessary financing. The two partnerships will, will work together on this unified project in terms of maintenance and services and the like. But when the project is hopefully approved, um, the Bessie Commons Corporation will enter into that sublease with Bessie Commons 2 LP. So that will ultimately be the applicant slash developer. One other thing, um, Cindy mentioned that there are some um, common parking spaces that are going to be constructed as part of this project. Some of them were shifted um, in, uh, to accommodate where people need to park, visitors and the like. So there'll be an amendment that will be part of this new sublease arrangement to clarify which, set, which of these parking spaces and related improvements are used by phase one, which are used by phase two, and which are used in common. And that arrangement will, of course, go before the town uh, because the town, as the lessor, has to approve amendments and approve the assignment of the, the, sub, the sublease of phase two. <coughs> so that's basically the structure of the project. And happy to answer any questions if that didn't confuse anybody or did confuse anybody. In other words, that's it. Okay, thanks. So I don't think there's any question in terms of right title and interest. We're just stewards of the property for, for the town of Scarborough, but um, it, it does become a little more complex and our actual application will be um, Bessie Commons to LP. So we will we'll modify that um, just to clarify as well. Um, 
I think the, uh, the next really critical thing may be the stormwater. I'm not sure if you want to see more on the site or if you'd like to get into some of the details, and I'd ask uh, Kurt Newfield to come to the microphone and talk about um, the way that, we, that he has designed this. Sure. Um, it's a pretty extensive design. Hello, I'm Kurt Newfeld with Sight Lines uh, out of Brunswick. Um, happy to be here working on the Phase 2. We did work with the uh, Senior Housing on Phase 1. So we're glad to have the continuity. As uh, Cindy had mentioned earlier, uh, this was anticipated. It obviously <coughs> happened. The shapes have changed. The parking layout has changed. But uh, just in general, serving this building, we did have electrical conduit come up. We have water available coming up with uh, also some sewer. So we're just able to extend those utilities uh, to the building. Water will come around. I'm sorry, electrical will come around this side water on this side and sewer pretty much comes straight out so very easy there is a natural gas stub out there as well um, so I just wanted to point those out before getting into the storm water um, the layout here with parking on both sides of the building to allow direct access from the uh, for the residents really lends itself to breaking a storm water from the pavement up to go here this is a focal point I just use the term focal point <laughs> focal point um, infiltration system that the board's not familiar with and it's recently approved by the DP for us recently. But it's a high rate infiltration in media. So it achieves the filtration quality that they're looking for in a much smaller footprint. And the nice thing is you could put plants within that footprint so it's really maybe like a little out of place in the middle of a lawn but it's much more attractive than some of the other uh, BMPs that they have used in the past. So the Water would be brought there by swales. It goes through this media. There's a small set of chambers which provides some additional treatment. And then that will go out and to be a new storm drain, not tying into theirs at all. But it does outfall the same existing detention basin down here. Similarly, this parking lot and this parking lot have their own focal point locations that they will drain to be a surface flow. And those get discharged into the existing detention basin. The building uses a, a drip edge filter on both sides. <coughs> They're separate, but it's basically stone on top of filter media that is under drained. And those will come out and daylight uh, out here to drain directly uh, down um, into the offsite areas. The, uh, the filter system slows the runoff down quite a bit. So although we'll outlet pr provide outlet protection, there's no real concern with the, uh, the runoff from those uh, roof grip edges. So we're breaking it up into different areas. We have submitted to, to the DEP. We met with them today. I understand, Angela, you would like to bend there. My apologies. Um, uh, but we will certainly keep you up to date on any things, uh, any developments there. They seem to think that the uh, presentation, uh, the planning for stormwater fit the criteria and uh, we hope it will go through their system fairly readily. Uh, we did review word of occurrence comments. We've given you some feedback. Um, I think that maybe I misunderstood some of your points about how we might further control peak rates of runoff. Um, we were taking a, a, an approach that required not so much extensive work inside this outlet control structure to make that work. The only storm event that we saw as increasing was the 25-year event. Um, happy to work with staff and look at that and see if there's some additional ways that we could limit that to meet their, uh, their uh, approvals. The difference is there's less than 10% of the peak flow, which really when you get into the, the way rainfall is calculated, it's almost uh, not statistically meaningful. But let's take a look at that. It does go into a very large wetland complex, which will further attenuate the, slow, the flows. Um, I hate to spend a lot of time on technical comments if the board doesn't want to hear it, so I guess I'll end my presentation there. Uh, if you want okay. questions about grading or drainage or 
site layout or landscaping, I'd be happy to answer any of those questions for you. Thank you. Yeah, it's always it's helpful to get an overview, and um, you know we we don't want to try to redesign it on the fly with you, but um, we appreciate the the overview, and I'm sure there will be some questions, and we'll have Angela weigh in as well. The the other issue is that we did our as we as Kurt said we made a presentation to DEP today, and I'm I think we're we're going to work in it together in tandem with with Angela so that we're all on the same page on that. But um, they were pleased, I think, with the number of structures we had and the way we were controlling it. Great. I just want to point out a couple things here relative to comments that we've already received. <coughs> As uh, Cindy noted, the, the, wet, the wetlands were mapped again, and the greenish solid fill represents the new wetlands and the outline in the, I don't know if you can even see that pattern, it looks like a dot pattern from you, was what was previously mapped 12 years ago. So they are very similar. Uh, there's a little bit less uh, around here, which is where I think we were potentially showing some impacts. There are now no wetland impacts uh, from any of our development. So that's the good news. You can see that this is basically all going on top of an existing field. There's the existing storm drain. What I want to mention is that there's a pretty substantial wooded area right along that property line, as one would hope. The uh, construction is going to stay out of the setbacks, which is right about where that wooded boundary starts. So that, that canopy will remain intact. Uh, there's some comments about whether or not some additional screening or buffering would be required. And uh, I think if you have an opportunity to look at the site, you'll see that that is a, a nice stand of vegetation that will screen not only the building, um, but also there was some discussion about the lighting. The lighting fixtures on the campus are kind of a carriage style, where the, the bulbs come up. Um, yeah, okay, thank you. So you can see the basic shape of it. The fixture is up underneath the cap, so it's fully shielded upwards and only shines down on these newer fixtures. So there's, it's really a good full cutoff, and they're only 18-foot uh, poles. So the uh, illumination plan, I think, showed that there was pretty good light control, and it does go down to a zero uh, illumination along that common boundary, which I'm upside down. So here. And um, that, combined with the uh, vegetation, I think will really prevent any light trespass to the neighbors. I just wanted to point out one thing. This this was this rendering was put into a an actual photograph. So this canopy, these trees are existing along that boundary that is common with the residents that live along Ward Street. Um, and we have no intention of cutting anything along that edge. Some of it's on their property, some of it's on ours. But I just wanted you to know that there, it's a pretty mature uh, group of trees back there. So, and then this shows what we're proposing to do for street types of trees. And then we have, um, we have one group of plantings that we're going to use on the south side that take a lot of sun, and another, side, another group of plantings that we're using on the north side to use uh, along the walkways and foundation plantings. Yes. Um, would you like us to present what's going inside the building? Okay. Right. I guess then, um, I think that uh, this includes most of most everything, and we'll just respond to. Sure. And to the, yeah, the there there may be other more detailed questions that come up, and and it sounds like you've got more available if we need it. So. We yeah. have. Right. <laughs> I think we can answer your questions. But, um, <laughs> We're here to help at whatever level you'd like us Great. to. So. But thank you for hearing our presentation tonight. Thank you. And I really appreciate the staff. Um, they responded so quickly and so thoroughly. We do, too. Yeah. Um, Ms. Teller, there's a little spot, I think, right on the podium there. That right here. Yep. There, you there you go. go. All right. Thank you. You're welcome to hold it if you'd like. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. but you don't have to. 
Uh, before we go to board discussion, we do have the opportunity for a public comment since this is the, the first time we've had this iteration in front of us. Anyone is interested? All right. We'll go to the board then. Susan, would you like to start off? Um, if this isn't going to work, let me know. But I'm, I've got the um, subdivision and site plan review comments in front of me. Okay, and I'm just going to go down and make sure that, that these items have, our, for example, number one, it talks about um, a three lot subdivision and um, it's uh, the whole question as to uh, what am I trying to say? I think we're coming up to the question about the TVC2. Do you have the subdivision elements in front of you? Okay. So we go down to the, the, when it was originally um, approved by the planning board, it included two lots. And it, we're encouraged to ask the applicant when these two lots were merged into one. What we just got through talking about with Rick, it, that it was never really going to be that way and it never was that way. So that whole thing just is, a, is moot, am I correct? Would appear so, yes. Yes, okay. And, um, okay. I think if, if I might, while you look for that, I, I, I do think, you know, uh, what uh, Mr. Chenet was sort of describing about the, the ownership yep. and the subleasing, that is certainly an element that is going to require some review probably by our town's attorney as mm -hmm. well. I and if I heard uh, Mr. Chenet uh, correctly, it sounds like it might even require council action if that's what you might have been alluding to when you said the town. So. Um, I, staff had a bunch of questions because. <laughs> well, that's why we're at. Yeah. We're at so, going right. back and forth yeah. with this. Okay. So um, site plan review elements. Um, okay. The applicant wishes to include bonus density for affordable senior housing, but they're not proposing to do this according to their application. We don't need to I mean, we don't need to go into all of these one at a time as long as I know that they're being taken care of. Yeah, we are not using the bonus density because okay. we're not maxing right. our bonus, our density right now. the difference in the so lot, <coughs> lot size? I mean, these are... Yeah, I think they're, they're pretty technical. I, okay, I so shouldn't say uh, technical. I think they're just, they're easily correctable. Let's, okay, let's so put it I that get way. this and I look through it and I read it all. And at yep. this point, I just ignore it. I mean, I just assume that that, that uh, staff is going to go over that and I don't have to worry about it. Yes. So okay, that's yep. great. <laughs> we'll leave it at that's yes. That's all I need to know. <laughs> ignore. <laughs> Anything I don't have to do, I would I, Yeah, I don't know if ignore is the word I would use. But, uh, but I'll it use will, that word. Okay. You mean it's yours, <laughs> not mine. Okay. Um, I'm a little confused about number E, where pedestrian ways space alternative transportation. Request the applicant formalize pedestrian access. Don't we have a pedestrian access to uh, Bessie Square now? Yes. Okay. So that doesn't have to be concerned. I can give that one up. Okay. I'm not concerned about the landscaping. The lighting is. Um, <coughs> I have to say. When I got the packet, I was very confused. I couldn't figure out where anything was going. This is something that I really would like to have. It sounds silly to say, but I'd like a sidewalk on this. I would like to actually see where the roads are going to go and where the turnaround is going to be and where the guards are going to go and you know where the where the buffering is because we'd be happy to do that with you anytime. I mean, if you just want to schedule a board review of it, that's fine. Or. I'll leave that up to the chair. It could be a board review or you could just say any of you who want to just call Cindy and make an appointment. Because I do think it's very confusing. Um, but I'm not, that's not a bad thing because it's a great lot. And it can take this. But as where I'm sitting, I, I, I need to see how the pieces are going to walk. To I, I had a similar thought, actually. I, I think it's one of those sites that a lot of us feel, it, feel like we know it because yeah. we go by a part of it all the time. Um, but when and you really dig into it. I drive up in there because I just love it up there. Yeah. So I do drive up there. But I can't tell when I'm up there where that building's coming in. Yeah. Right. So I think, think it would be nice okay. to, to, try to, make sure, try to make sure that everyone on the board kind of has the same baseline okay. familiarity with the site. So I think that would be good. I want to make sure that we are clear about the wet, wetland delineation. I, I'm not clear where we ended up with that. Thank you. So we had, we as part of our original, we had a wetland, our wetland right. delineated out there. And then Angela reminded me that <clears throat> we needed to update that. It, your wetlands were only good for five years. 
And so we hired a wetlands professional that went out there last week. Okay. Um, Stantec, and um, who had bought our, our, the company that we had do it originally. And, um, and they remapped it, and we have resubmitted that. Okay, so we'll see that when it comes around to You will, and it, that's what we were showing tonight okay. as well. But and, it's, and actually, the wetlands have been reduced by a considerable amount, so. Interesting, isn't it? I think a lot of this is very technical stuff which will get worked out between staff and the applicants as we go towards um, <coughs> the first round of taking a look. I guess if I can get a, wa a site walk in here, I'm going to feel a whole lot better about this because um, the individual pieces are fine, but I want to make sure that it all just comes together in a, in a way that I can understand. So thank you. Thanks. Roger? <coughs> um, first, I want to say I, I think uh, what you've done there so far has been terrific, and what I'm looking at looks great. And uh, just a couple of things. Um, you mentioned that. Sister Cindy, you mentioned in your uh, presentation, I'm just kind of curious, you, you mentioned a public road. Yes. So can I assume the road that comes in from Route 1, that's all public? Yes. And, and it can, does that basically continue there where the hammerhead is? It does. It terminates at the hammerhead, and then we've actually um, provided access for when we created the three lots, the third lot was uh, after we built Bessie Commons one. Um, the town sold the third lot to uh, Maine Veterans Home, um, but at the end of that T-turn, we've created an access if any time in the future we need connectivity there for them, it is available. So that so road actually goes to the Veterans Home? It, w it could. It's in, it would have to be built and it would take some serious building, but it could, could connect because that third lot is now theirs. Okay. It, and that lot, just so you know, Roger, goes out. <coughs> the, the original Bessie School um, property started on Route 1, and then it's kind of a dog leg or an L-shaped, and it goes all the way out to Commerce Drive. It's that portion that goes out to Commerce Drive that we have the ability to connect to the town road because we have an easement to their property. And then the, you know, the, rest, of, the rest of their site is our direct abutter. Okay. Well, we're still talking about the public. Um, how do you handle the, uh, the snow plowing? The town plows that. They, they plow the... They plow the town road. road. Yes. Yep. But you folks do the interior where the parking lot... Absolutely. We have professional snow plow okay. companies right. that we contract um, with. The, um, I was just kind of curious about that. And the other thing I wonder, uh, I guess this would be directed to Angela. Um, is, there's not going to be, are you satisfied that there's not going to be any effects on East, Eastern Villages right beyond, down below you folks, right? There's two parcels. There's, the, there's our wooded section and then there's another wooded section that I believe is a, another phase that they have that's between us and their current development. But they're, they're basically downhill from where everything goes downhill. Correct. Mm -hmm. So uh, are we pretty satisfied that... Uh, their engineering is going to meet all the necessary standards and everything. So those people who buy those expensive homes down here. <laughs> well, I will say that the Eastern Village stormwater model is quite extensive, and mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of wetlands in between, as Cindy mentioned. But um, that's all part of their larger model is what's coming off the site, and really it's looking it was a snapshot. So again. Anything that changes upstream of that can change what happens downstream. So I think that's where, again, we were highlighting making sure the flood controls are, are there in place. And what they accommodated for um, culverts and crossings of the roadway and through their ponds or around their ponds is all based on that. Um, because if I'm not mistaken, the, um, the insurance business that we just dealt with, they're also tied into this too, aren't they? Not that that's going to be... They are on another leg of it, I yes, mean, but not the they're not directly downstream of yeah. it, no. Okay. Um, <coughs> I, I don't think I have anything else. I, I, there's a lot of technical things like Jay was saying, and, um, which I think the staff would probably work out. Roger, you did mention the um, public uh, roadway. I, I have um, talked to Mike Shaw, who's our public works director, and 
and um, he, he and I have worked out an arrangement around that hammerhead so that our plowing systems can work together. And he's he's been fabulous to work with over the last 12 years, and I expect to continue that relationship. No, I I, I think it's a great addition to to the town and what you've done already and what you're going to do in the future. I think it looks great. So thank you. I'm awesome. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Um, thank you for clarifying that. I was going to piggyback on Roger's question about the plowing because that, that is an awkward situation where the plow appears that it's going to have to just turn off and possibly leave a bank of snow in front of your entrance to where the private plowing would take place. That's okay. We can, we'll, we, can, we have it covered. Yes. <laughs> we'll, that. we'll take care of it. I can't wait to hear what it is. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the other question I had for you was um, Max footprint, and maybe I misread this or misunderstood this, but uh, in the TVC2, is it a 10,000 square foot max footprint? Uh, it is. However, um, let me see if I can get my bearings on this one. I don't believe that applies to senior housing. Senior housing. Okay. So, so they can make it as large as they'd like. They can make it as large as the planning board would permit. Yes. Oh, good answer. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, and then. As far as you had a waiver request on the recreation impact fees, and I'd be curious to hear this board's take on something like that. Um, and I understand the argument that you do provide a lot of recreation on site um, for for the residents. Um, I, I think I I think I'd like to hear a little bit of a discussion on that. I personally, I don't like giving exemptions like. In, in these circumstances based on the type of facility you are because where do you draw the line? Is it senior housing? Is it, um, you know, I don't like picking winners and losers. If everyone's going to play by the rules, I like them to play by the rules. So, but, but I understand the argument that you are providing a lot of recreational opportunities already on site. So I'd be interested to hear the full board discussion on that if they don't mind weighing in. Um, and then uh, the last point I had was related to the connectivity of, and I assume maybe staff was maybe uh, pointing to where the, the coffee shop and the parking lot mm -hmm. area, and I think that would be a fantastic spot for whether it's a small sidewalk. I, I'd have to probably have to remind myself to see it out there, but I believe well, we have a we we've I built a sidewalk along Route One. Um, both in front of the school and also in front of the coffee shop. So we okay. have two means of access uh, on Bessie Commons 1 to get to Route 1. For anybody that's handicapped, that's the route that they would take to, to get out. If, you know, if they're in a, a, a mobilized wheelchair or something like that, they would go to Route 1. For anybody who likes a good walk, which we have a lot of people that do, they, we have a walkway that connects Bessie Commons 1 with our lower parking lot at Bessie Square. I actually purchased that property because I wanted to move the building closer to the schools, our, our second phase. Um, but then as uh, we started developing Bessie Square and the restaurant came along, I needed that, that entire area to, for parking to support the restaurant and to build that uh, commercial development out. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, we located Bessie to where it is. Um, but we have, we have great access. Um, pedestrian access. I, you you probably are map, familiar with that parking lot. If on the map you could just quickly show me, because you know, I'm pretty certain I know where the back of that parking lot is uh, for the commercial space. Right, so I think what I'm at, want to. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yes. Right. But, you know, it's very so my question is, have you considered connecting that parking lot to the other parking lot? Because in my experience, people like to walk in the shortest possible path. Oh, and so instead oh. of sending them up a public road up onto Route One and then over to O'Reilly's Cure, how about a shortcut? Um, I, ca I can do that. I can that's, do that. Yeah. That would be my thoughts, and I yeah. think that's maybe what staff could have been driving at because if. 
one, you've got senior housing there. I'm sure the longer walk is probably not in their best interest in most cases. Right. And uh, people tend to gravitate towards the straight line. Yeah, I'll, and I'd be happy to talk to you further if we all go out and take a look at the site. I'd love to schedule that tonight if okay. you have a chance. Um, and, uh, but yeah, happy to talk about that. That's, that is it for my comments. Okay. Thanks, Nick. Robin? Yeah. So I agree with Mr. McGee. I'm not necessarily partial to a to a waiver for the recreation fee. I'm interested, though, in what other uh, board members have. Um, but I guess um, my questions are relative to um, phase one, phase two, and I got a little confused too about parcel one, two, and three. So, is there are there any plans to have a phase three? that would go on the same parcel somewhere? No, again, that phase, that lot three was sold to Maine Veterans, Veterans Home. Veterans Home, okay. And they, I think, in turn, are okay. thinking about a massive development on their okay. site. But, so. but as far as this parcel is concerned that's outlined here, We're there's only, no additional? No. There's no additional phase? Just two, two okay. lots. I mean, we we have the potential because we're not maxing the the density. You know, if I well, could come back. I'm, yeah, and where I'm going with this too, Cindy, is um, it, it sort of is folding into the stormwater piece mm -hmm. um, because I guess I'm I'm going to challenge the stormwater a little bit here because I heard that the only increase will be for the 25 year event, um, like in it was mainly like 10 percent. But if you're not using the right rainfall data, then you don't really know what what your increase is. And because of the sensitive nature of the communities around here, the trees and the wetland are going to be your best friend to keep the stormwater on site. So I might even throw out that perhaps we think about some deed restrictions to maintain that forest canopy as, as sort of like a forested buffer or a wetland conservation easement to be your best friend for stormwater management if you can't get if you can't get zero impacts, those are going to be your best friends kind of a thing. Or maybe, as Angela was saying, thinking about that existing stormwater gallery there, what we can do to maximize that uh, performance. Sure. Okay? There will always be some wetlands back there. I mean, we're, it's not our intent to go back down in there. If right. I was, I mean, I could make that building in phase two a little bit larger. Yep. Actually, I didn't realize it, but when we did phase one, we were allowed to do a four-story building, and yeah. that's what we started down the path to design, and then I realized that the zoning had been changed. Well, I like the idea of you going up instead of out. Me too. Uh, I'm with you. Yeah. Um, but that's where I would yeah. see it in the future, um, but yeah. those woods are gorgeous. I, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so in general, too, um, I know you're just beginning your discussions with DEP, and I would please encourage you to include Angela in all those discussions. She's a tremendous resource, and we'll also have more ideas. She reminded me of forward. that today. I <laughs> wish you'd yeah. told me before our meeting. <laughs> Happy to ever. Uh, but, but I like how you put that you're sort of stewards of the property for the town. And um, I feel like there's a lot of opportunity here for some conservation practices and the like um, because of the open space, especially of the upland. So, and I actually think that, you know, the, my idea of asking for that waiver was twofold. One is that we provide a tremendous amount of activity that Bessie won. Um, bridge groups come in from outside. We have, you know, about 40 people every Thursday come in and do quilting. And, you know, we don't charge for it. We take, we maintain the space. We clean it. We heat it. We light it. And we let people use it. So I, I feel like we are doing some things for the community, and that's why I asked. Absolutely. And so my comments are twofold with respect to that. One is I remember when it used to be a, a, a soccer field. I would take my daughter there to mm -hmm. the Bessie School. So there, there is some impact to recreation there. But number two is all those... Have all those traffic counts, all those trips in with Bridge Group, been incorporated into the traffic study? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then um, the other, you know, going back to your question on the woods, I mean, we, we would love to just see if we can put in some walking trails down there right. that would be nice so that everybody can use it. But what I'm, cons what I'm worried about is we've seen, without the, without the covenants or deed restrictions kind of a thing, we've seen some instances before the planning board where, it, you know, if completely maybe not, you know, meant to happen, but those trees get taken down and then you lose not only the buffer to Ward Street, but, but the stormwater management that, that the trees provide between your property and Eastern Village and, and the other abutters. So keep doing what you're doing. It's, it's great. I think you're on the right track. I think there's a lot of opportunity here, though. So 
I encourage you to keep yeah. keep staff in the loop. So thank yeah. you. Well, I participated in those planning sessions. The interconnectivity is important. But, you know, I, I appreciate all of those things as well. Thank you. Thanks. Rachel? Yeah, um, a lot of my colleagues uh, here have uh, teased out some of the answers to some of the questions I had, uh, including uh, Roger and your discussion of the, the road. I was trying to decide whether it was a road or a driveway uh, because it appeared to be <coughs> described as each at some point. Uh, at one point, and I can't find it in my notes, but I believe at one point you referenced uh, the availability, uh, the contemplation of community gardens, raised gardens. We have some raised gardens there now. Uh, could you show me? Sure. I should have brought a picture. Yeah, it shows on the aerial, but it's hard to see. We have community gardens, we have community gardens right along here. Um, and we would continue that. I think we would continue these gardens here for both. So we have a kind of a, a joint garden opportunity for for both phase one and phase two. Would but that uh, would that interfere at all with uh, Mr. McGee's uh, discussion no. about creating a no. connection to the? No. What we did here was we built a we built a raised bed that's about four feet high, so people can literally stand at those. In other complexes, we have them at, mul at different levels, and we have them so you can wheel under them if you're in a wheelchair. So I think we would design a garden system here that would, you know, accommodate as many people as possible. But they're very effective. I mean, raised beds. Mm -hmm. I mean, people can raise so much food. Right. Uh, I'm looking at the plans that you have, and I assume that they really have just uh, for the house, for the apartments themselves. And I'm assuming that they're really just kind of sketches because there's no indication on here of square footage uh, for the apartments. Um, just a couple of questions. Are all of these uh, wheelchair accessible? They are. They're all wheelchair accessible. They all have three foot doors. Um, some are more accessible than others, but, but we have designed them so that we can accommodate uh, wheelchair access in all of our units. And I can show you those if you come for a tour. I'd be happy to show you a unit. We're actually duplicating the units that we did in, in phase one. Okay. Uh, and another question, I'm looking at laundry. Uh, are there, is there laundry facilities in the apartments or no, is just... No, on each floor we, pr we provide a common laundry facility. So we have a washer and dryer in each, at each level. So I am, I'm looking and it looks as though you've got one washer dryer unit for 14 apartments. Is that kind of cramped or...? No, you know, there, most people um, get into a routine and because they have seven days a week to do it and they know when their neighbors are doing it they can you know work pretty successfully that doesn't seem to be a problem we have some guidelines um, for that with our funding sources too that stipulate how many machines we have so if we're light on that concept we'll we add them All right thank you I really look forward to a site visit I think that'd be very helpful love to share thank you Thanks. Rick? Um, I have some questions on the traffic study, actually. Um, That's my only consultant I don't have here tonight. <laughs> yeah, I kind of enjoy looking through them, and um, usually they're pretty straightforward, so I don't have a lot of questions. <coughs> but on this one, how many? Let me let me ask some leading questions first, maybe. <laughs> how many parking spaces are there at Bessie's? There's, there's two phases, right? Phase Correct. one, phase two. Yeah. And phase one is occupied now? Phase one has been occupied for 12 years. Okay. So how many parking spaces are there for phase one? There are 54 units there, and we have 63, uh, I believe, 63 spaces. So you have 63 spaces there. I like math, too. And you have 40 spaces. We have 40 units that were in phase two, and we'll have 57 spaces that we're adding. You have 57 spaces. We always want to have enough, so we have... <laughs> But accommodations for guests. So if I do the math right, we have a total of 120 spaces for cars. Mm -hmm. And then you have, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you have some services associated with this, these facilities, right? So you have landscaping probably. 
maintenance. Do you provide cleaning at all these units too? We don't. They, really? Because in here it says you do. Well, we don't. <laughs> we we prov I There's told you they were leading questions. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> we don't have. Uh, we have our maintenance people that sometimes help residents with their cleaning, but we don't have. It's not something we offer. It's something that people take advantage of if they need services like that. We, the services that generally the people get at Bessie are, I mean, some people do have their apartments clean, but are generally the um, homemaker services and also um, home health care agents that come in. Okay. So you're trying to get to a... You're so you have 120 spaces and you're saying there's 11 trips per day? That's, that, that's per peak hour. Per that's peak hour? Mm -hmm. Right, so the traffic study just looks at the peak, the peak hours and what their impacts are during those times. Okay. Um, it doesn't look at sort of total daily load, so to speak. <laughs> to and this to borrow a stormwater phrase. <laughs> I like that. We have a lot of people that don't. And have the uh, and the school that closed in '97 had 47 trips per peak hour then. Oh, uh, probably more. No. Oh yeah. What kind of school is this? <laughs> well, I went to school there. It was um, it was a junior high. It was a junior high. Yeah, and then uh, and we had sports activities. We had buses. Um, and then prior to when I I um, signed the lease, it was a um, resource center, and they did special needs facilities there, and they had uh, roofs recyclables in there. Um, so, it, but it was, uh, it went from a junior high school, it started as high school, went from a junior high, went to a junior high, and then became an elementary school. <coughs> okay. <coughs> All right, I just, um, hmm. it just doesn't seem logical, I guess, but it's. Well, if you looked at the trips that are generated on a much greater basis because the schools are much larger, but if you think about the buses, the teachers, the parents, um, and all the ancillary people that, are t that come and go on a school at peak hours, um, it's a very different, it's a very different uh, transportation system than you have for retired people. Eric, we can put this on the sort of the list for <laughs> <after> <laughs> the applicant to come. Yeah, it may be, it may be, um, it may be that I was just confused. So, all right, um, other than the traffic, the only thing that I'd like to um, mention, and you're, it looks really nice. I like it. Very nice design. Thank you. But um, I've seen some similar facilities that have, like, a covered area where you pull up in front for the folks to get out. Like a portico? Yeah, and I don't want you to change your design. It's just a, it's just a thought for phase three. Yeah, um, we we have both. In cert I mean, in our assisted living, we put in porticos. Um, generally speaking, we're, it's not necessary for these for this independent house. Yeah, cause only because of what you do to cut off light from the community space where they want to be in their air conditioned space. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I like that. I may be confused on the traffic, but the rest of it looks really nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, already been a lot of good comments and questions, and I'm not going to retrace all of that. Um, just to touch a few things quickly. Uh, first, to pick up on uh, Rick's one of Rick's last comments, uh, I don't and I don't want it to be lost in everything else. I I really like the uh, you know we've seen the architecture to this point, and I think it seems like a, a confirmation that you're looking to tie it in to what's already there, which you know is what we would expect, and so. Look forward to seeing that uh, fleshed out more. Um, and it, you know, it, not only does it <coughs> is it consistent with that unified sort of campus concept, but um, I think at least based on what we're seeing right now, it seems to be consistent with our with our design standards. So um, that's definitely promising. Um, going to this issue of right title and interest on the on the you know the different leases, um, for better or worse, I work in this industry too and so I, I can just say for whatever it's worth to my fellow board members that it may sound a little bit a little bit wonky but it's actually not all that exotic 
um, and the, you do have these different um, limited partnerships that that own and ultimately control these different properties that are attached to different pieces of, of financing when these tax credits are involved. So um, I'm sure, as, as Jay said, you know the town will do its due diligence and, and make sure that everything is um, what it needs to be. But I can just say it's actually it's not quite as <laughs> quite as wacky as it may sound. Um, we have obviously some stormwater and buffering uh, details to work through, and it sounds like we're on the right track on that. Um, I agree with the comment um, on, I think it was Nick's comment about um, providing a sidewalk connection uh, up, up uh, into the, the existing uh, Riley's Cure area. <coughs> Glad to hear, Cindy, that you, you sound amenable to looking at that. Um, what else do we have here? Again, I don't want to put things into the ground. Um, oh, just I, I think I guess I need to weigh in on the sort of the the, the recreational fee. Um, I, I mean, I appreciate where you're coming from in that, Cindy. I guess my inclination is to sort of, you know, for the sake of sort of continuity, uh, to to not weigh that. Um, partly because, um, you know, although there are opportunities, there. Are you know, they're not necessarily things that sort of the general public would would uh, necessarily know about. So, um, again, I don't see that as a big issue. Uh, hopefully, it's not for you, but that's kind of where I am on that right now. Um, and then going back to the site walk, I don't know it will necessarily get it scheduled tonight, but in you know, typically, we'll, you know, I'm sure Jay will shoot us an email tomorrow, uh, and we'll we'll coordinate our schedules. And anyone who can't make it. You know, based on the, the, the straw poll that we do, I, I assume they'll swing by on their own time. And, but I think that will be really helpful to kind of get the lay of the land and mm -hmm. see how it all kind of fits together and, you know, where certain decision points might be. So, um, Susan? Um, it just dawns on me this, this question about um, waiver and um, recreation. And then you talked about trails. I think that there's something that can be worked out might be able to be worked out, and I don't want to get into it right now, but maybe what, working with staff is a way of helping to develop some trails and call that a contribution to recreation. Hmm. Yeah, that's just an idea. I, I think it needs to be better defined. Than, okay. um, oh, it does. Yeah. No, I'm just saying. So, and Corey, I, I agree. We need to do something. I mean, okay. We'll do something. Okay. All right. Um, any other sort of preliminary feedback that you're looking for from us at this point? No, I think uh, you know the, the you know it tends to become a little confusing between the lot lines and the parking, and we'll work that out with easements and make sure that everybody's comfortable with that. Okay. Just Roger. One quick question: um, Will there be any connectivity with Easton Village from here? Or I don't you own don't anything. I don't have any connection. I don't have any direct connections. Our, lo our lots do not abut. I looked at oh, that. Okay. Okay. If they did, I would, um, but I don't have a direct connection, Roger, but maybe over time we can work on something. Okay, great. Thank you, and we'll look forward to seeing you out there, I guess. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Item number nine, Burnham Brookside LLC requests an amended site plan review for building H5, Dunstan Village Residential, Assessor's Map U30, Lot 17. Jay? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, let's see, as probably many, if not all, board members may recall, uh, this, is a, a, this is a site plan amendment for one of the buildings that was approved. I think it was just probably about a little less than a year ago down to um, what's being called the Dunstan Village component of the Dunstan Crossing subdivision. These are the properties right along Route 1 and more specifically the property on the right hand side as you access the site from Route 1 where there was a number of uh, residential units that were approved. Uh, four of them were three bedroom, or I'm sorry, 
four of the buildings were three unit um, townhouses and those are currently under construction. And then there was this building H5, which is a, a larger three-story multi-family uh, development. Um, so what is being presented before you is a amendment to that previous building. Um, the size is a little bit smaller and the units are configured a little differently and I'm sure the applicant would, can detail those for you as well. Um, this is in the TVC zone, so it does permit for this type of use. And as I said, there's a previously approved subdivision and site plan. And really at this time, um, the only thing that needs amendment is the site plan because the subdivision governs, uh, allows for the uh, number of units that are being suggested. Um, so you will have received staff comments, which we um, really uh, note uh, some uh, issues just around landscaping, ensure that there's a detailed coordination with the storm drain system. Um, there's just a question about snow removal given the way some things are being reconfigured. Um, some of the board members might recall there was limited snow removal areas previously. The applicant had talked about, well, once those areas are full, they'll take it off site. Um, so just want to be sure we have that discussion and that there's an understanding about what will happen moving forward. Um, Outside of that, like I said, you should have staff comments on this. And uh, at this point, I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks. And I'll turn it over to Mr. Frank. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, my name is Sean Frank. I'm a civil engineer with Sebago Technics. Uh, with me tonight is Harold Burnham of uh, uh, Burnham Brookside LLC. Uh, when we were here last summer with uh, Elliot Chamberlain uh, presenting the uh, residential development associated with Dunstan Village, I think he was uh, being pretty clear that he was specifically going to develop those, uh, those uh, three unit buildings, the four three unit townhouse buildings, uh, but wasn't quite sure if he was going to develop the apartment building itself. Uh, over that time, he's worked with Harold and Harold has worked with him. Uh, Harold has his, uh, a, a design criteria of his own, uh, but we do have an agreement now and between the two parties. Uh, just in terms of, again, just like all, everything else is within Dunstan, uh, even though Harold will be developing the apartment building and will uh, own it and maintain it, he will be part of the association associated with that. Uh, so as, uh, as uh, staff discussed, there is limited, obviously, snow storage area right up on the village itself just because of uh, a lot of the landscaping that was occurring, a lot of the parking, the buildings themselves. Uh, but as you all recall, once you went down to the road onto the left, we had a, a pretty large field area proposed down through there. And I think it was always Elliot's contention that the association, if you would, who was responsible for the removal of snow uh, on a necessary basis always had that big field that they could just drag the snow down to. So, um, you know, that's, that's still the plan. Uh, we do appreciate the fact that, you know, we were so in an area there for uh, some snow storage. How much could actually be accommodated within that area is probably pretty limited anyway. But uh, what I did bring for the board, uh, was basically the, the two plans, if you will. Uh, the bottom plan here being uh, the approved site plan at that time uh, for, uh, for Elliott and Dunstan Village. Uh, that particular building was 9,892 square feet in size. Uh, Harold's footprint is a bit smaller, uh, almost 2,000 feet smaller, where we have 7,974 square feet. Uh, what we have in here actually is a, a total of uh, 36 units. They're all single, single bedrooms in studio apartments, uh, less than the 750 square feet. Yes, Harold. Uh, so that from a, you know from a net residential density standpoint, it all fit. Uh, Harold, as you may recall, uh, actually developed the, uh, the, the apartments uh, off from Broad Turn Road down behind the diner. Um, so it's uh, the, the layout of the floor plan and the, the, the tenants that he's talking about, uh, he's uh, understood very well. In terms of the building uh, that Elliot had proposed, if I can get over there. Discussion standpoint, uh, the, the, it's still a three-story building. Uh, in terms of the architectural features, the, uh, uh, the peaked roof, the asphalt, uh, the roof lines, I think Elliot probably because he had the bigger building, we have had some, uh, uh, some more dimensions associated with it and some, perhaps some more architectural details to it. That's actually the back, isn't it, Errol? Yes. 
I'll get there. But again, this would be the front of the building uh, in the side of the building. Uh, so again, just in terms of the overall general appearance associated with the building, we tried to maintain that same type of character, if you will, uh, even though we were uh, having a smaller footprint associated with it. Uh, well, we also had, uh, for Elliot, landscaping plan associated with H5, uh, which was what he was calling this building at that time. Uh, this has been prepared uh, for him by Foresight Architects. Uh, unfortunately, they've been, been now part of Harriman Associates, so I couldn't actually have them revise the plan. Uh, but in terms of all the planting types that are there, the number of plantings and all those types of things, we'll basically incorporate those right onto this site plan. Obviously, we want to meet with you folks and make sure you're all comfortable in terms of the revisions to the plan itself. Uh, prior to incorporating that, but there is additional room. We do have a sidewalk out back, but obviously we have more room because of the smaller footprint uh, to accommodate the, that landscape, and so we will incorporate that landscaping. Uh, as you may recall, we also have some field drains in through here uh, to collect the runoff from the uh, landscaped areas and direct it out back, and uh, that will accommodate that as well if the, if the board would be comfortable making that a conditional of approval, working that through with staff. The other major change associated with this was, remember there was uh, an actual building proposed for uh, the trash storage. Uh, again, I don't know if you've been out to, uh, uh, to Harold's uh, development off of Broad Turn Road, uh, but what he likes to have is he actually has a series of bins out to the back. Each, basically each apartment has their own bin. Uh, the question was raised in terms of what's wrapped around that. It's actually a fence. It's a six foot high white vinyl fence and we'll commit to that in association with that. Uh, basically, again, the sidewalk access to, to the back so people can get in there. That's actually picked up by a private contractor on, on a needed basis. Uh, but again, each one of the, the units uh, actually has a bin in the back that they can access and utilize. And again, he has it in the other uh, facility and it's worked out very well. Uh, again, as we go through it, um, all the infrastructure is actually part of the original developer, so again, Harold's basically part is basically to uh, develop the building itself, the association and landscape and those types of things. Uh, we did go through staff comments and in terms of the fact that we did because we lost the building, if you will, for the trash. We actually have two additional parking spaces, so we'll certainly uh, pick up on that. I mentioned the, uh, the white vinyl, six foot high white vinyl fencing. Uh, and in terms of the Scarborough Sanitary District, uh, we have a meeting with the superintendent uh, this Thursday uh, with a meeting with the trustees. I believe it's the third Thursday of the month. Uh, obviously, at that point in time, really, again, understand all the infrastructure is approved. Uh, Mr. Chamberlain's putting in the infrastructure up to the manhole just outside of the building. It's really getting the acceptance of the flows, if you will, from the trustees and obviously uh, the writing of the check associated with that. So uh, uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd conclude my presentation. Again, I think it's, it's, it's similar, actually a little smaller scale uh, than what the board had approved uh, previously. Um, and again, the landscaping, uh, if the board's comfortable, again, you know, we'll basically take that same landscape and incorporate it into that site and, uh, and, and get a plan to staff for approval if, if the board's comfortable with that. Uh, with that, I conclude my presentation and certainly be happy to answer any questions or forward to ask. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll first offer opportunity for public comment. All right. Who wants to go first? Um, this question is to both you and Angela. <coughs> Does my memory serve? Didn't we ex ask to that there be roof drip line trenches around that building? No, no. What no. it is, is um, the roof is actually has the roof drains connected to this um, underground. Well, the groundwater recharge. Right, oh, the, the groundwater recharge. Going, remember, we had so little field inlets with uh, okay. with under drains in between them, okay. flat under drains. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, if I remember right, it goes around and it's uh, it's. The outfall is one foot higher than the inlet, so we actually store that first foot of water, so we're trying to percolate as much as we okay. can back into the so system. So the roof as well as he mentioned the landscape area, but it also does collect the roof. Great. Yes, but you're right. That does include the roof, though. I'm Excellent. glad you mentioned that. All right. I'm all set then. Thank you. Thank you. Rachel? 
Yeah, just a, a little technical note here. I'm looking at sheet one of two, which is actually that one that you have up there. And under the note, you still note that what's going to be built include, will include 36 single bedroom apartments. And you have now um, changed that to four studio and uh, 32 one bedroom. So I think you need to change that. No, I, actually, no, Rachel, I think, I think what was previously approved was the 32 one bedrooms and Two, two, two bedrooms, two, two correct. Bedrooms. So they are, they had 34 approved, which is uh, 30, 32 one bedroom, two two bedrooms. Uh, we're proposing 36 one bedroom studio apartments. 32 one bedrooms and four studios, correct? No. They're proposing 36 one bedroom apartments. Well, I am. Hmm. Did I mention something wrong in my in my letter? If I did, I well, I, I saw. Uh, where did I see? I saw a, I saw under your A two A, a uh, one dash two. I'm looking at studios. Three hundred and seventy one square feet, four hundred twenty five square feet. Studio design A, studio B. Studio. Yeah, no, I studio. I so there are four studios. Well, it's a mix. Instead of 36. I'm sorry. Could you tell me where you're reading that now? Uh, first floor plan, A 1.2. Okay. So plan sheet. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's showing four studio apartments. Right. Uh, our total count. They say 36 units consisting of one bedroom um, right. and studio apartments. I'm looking at that, but they, yes. Uh, well, I, so so I'm seeing four studio apartments I, on the first floor. So those are still one bedrooms, though. I don't know. Where's the bedroom? In the studio. I, I think it has to be one or the other. It's it's either a studio or it's a one bedroom. But I don't. What I'm and what I'm noting is that you're saying 36 single bedroom apartments, and I would suggest under the note that it be changed to 32 one bedroom apartments and four studios. It's, it's more that's studios what you're than showing. that. What's the actual count? 36 and 10. It's 36 and 10. I mean 26 and 10 for a total of 36. Okay. Well, then that needs to be changed on the note. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, and I. I was thinking from an ordinance standpoint. I appreciate where you're coming from now. So uh, there, there needs to be some sort of consistency if you have plans that show um, studios. I actually don't see the studios on the second floor. I see only one bedroom. And on the third floor, I only see one bedrooms. I don't see studios. I think I it's a matter of I didn't bring the floor plans as me. Mr. Frank was saying. I think in, in, in the way we were sort of thinking of them, so long as there's only one bed and they're under 750 square feet, our zoning ordinance counts that as a half a unit. So I think, so yeah, it's a, it's a vernacular issue and we can certainly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just. Yes, the square footage is certainly ordinance. there. It's the same number. And you're right. I just look at it from an ordinance stand, so I apologize. I, but I think, I, I mean, again, I'd be happy to revise that note to say 26 single bedroom and 10 studios. You might want I almost think it's easier to call the, the the floor plan to call them all one, even a studio still has one bed, so it's really. Oh, that's yeah. Fun. We can we can work out yeah. the, uh, the plan. Yeah, you can work that out. Uh, I have a question then on the back. You've set up a community, sort of community gathering space. How how big is that? Uh, it's roughly just 10 by 10. I, I can see where it is in the uh, uh, connected to the the walkway in back. Hey there, uh, Rachel. I'm Harold Burnham, by the way. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Could you grab the handheld, you go, Mr. Harold. Burnham. Thank you. Yeah, that looks like it's on. I guess uh, you're talking about this space right here? Yes. Yeah, that just would be a space for a couple of benches or something to sit out. W would you be putting, what, six benches there or just a place for Perhaps. people to gather? Just wanted to call for a space to 
you know, uh, just sit out outside. You know. Very fortunate to be able to have the opportunity to build an apartment building inside of a place that offers so many amenities. And uh, maybe there's some opportunity to uh, enjoy the backyard. Thank you. Children being 16 feet skinnier, I believe it's and I note you have the walkway back there, which is nice. It allows people the opportunity to, to walk oh, around. Walkway. Yeah. Uh, and the trash, uh, 36 apartments. Uh, so there'll be 36 trash containers in a 16 by 20 foot trash bin collection area. Yeah, those are commercial totes. They're 100, 125 gallons, like as opposed to your town, it's probably a 70 gallon tote. So they get all emptied twice a week. And what it does is uh, tenants really don't like the 5, 6 o'clock in the morning dumpster. They really bang the heck out of it in the morning. And uh, also, that dumpster, it, unless you get lock and key it, is kind of like a community dumpster. Um, people are less likely to back up the truck and put. Like I said the last time we did this, it's hard to put a mattress inside of a tote, you know, as opposed to a dumpster when someone moves out or they tend to uh, uh, purge their lifestyle into a dumpster as opposed to a tote. So it's also, uh, when, you, uh, when you have a dumpster, there is uh, also, if there's some high winds, too, it, 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 it sends an awful lot of debris as they dump it <coughs> So the whole system has been a phenomenal system for us. How many would you guess? I would tell them each one for one. Probably not that. Oh, no. Um, I'd say probably, you know, it's an as, a, as needed thing, too. I think I misspoke. I was saying one per unit, and obviously that's not the case. There's still count, communal totes when it comes down. Probably about 14, 15 of them in there, I guess. Okay. Uh, and I, I'm sure you have it in here, but I don't recall what it was. How high is the fence surrounding that? Six feet. All right. Thank you very much. Those, that trash calculation is also done by like, Casilla or Waste Management. They, they accommodate it. And if it's not done enough times, then it gets done more times per week. So it's very low impact and very quiet. And less diverse. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks. Rick? Morning. Um, I appreciate how quickly and clearly and concisely you did your uh, presentation. This is my favorite of the night. If I, if I could have flipped through those a little quicker, I could have done better. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see much of a change from the original. So, I mean, it's actually a little, I think it's a nice one that was originally proposed. Great, thanks. You went down here next? I got one quick question. Um, architecture. I think we had a more, probably more thorough look at it last go around. Um, this go around, while I know it's kind of minimal changes, this could just, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I don't like your sign, like not even a little bit. And <laughs> you know, when I viewed this property as an en entirety, this looked like it was going to be, you know, quite a stunning development when you look at it in its entirety. I feel like that sign just seemed like an afterthought. And I think you could represent the entire project a little bit more consistently. If you're in love with that sign, I'm sorry, but that it, like I said, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I don't know if anyone up here feels the same way as me. I just feel like it lacks something. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> got to be you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> huh? yeah, uh, is there one particular sign that you... Both. I, I think both they look like they were kind of just slapped in graphically. Well, see, what we have here is that this is a... Um, these, are, these are, when you look in the interior of the building, those are kitchens. So you get this big blank space up here, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, quite honest, uh, this name represents uh, five decades of... It's not the name. Okay. It's <laughs> it's <laughs> not it's not it's the actual sign. But we, we were thinking about getting rid of this one here. Okay. That helps. I, and I don't know if it's because it's up on the building, it, it makes me think motel. If it was on a stone stand right next to your entrance, that said the same thing. I, I it just seems well like I, we, I, I, I kind of, uh, my opposing view was 
I wanted to make sure people didn't think this was an hotel. I mean, I wanted to just right. them to know that it was an apartment building. Like I said, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I don't know if anyone up here feels the same way, but I had to say I something. <laughs> it did, it's the first thing I noticed when I looked at the architecture of this building. You got it. <laughs> Uh, that's it. That was my. Turn. That was it. Thanks, Nick. That's all right. Well, I wound up about. Roger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna let Sue. She wants to talk. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I just have a question regarding the trash bin. I'm kind of intrigued with this whole thing. Okay. Um, so. I would discuss a different. These are going to be commercial trash bins, but they're not going to be a. Yes, you, t you take a standard town tote that's out in front of a residential house. Yeah. It's just a lot bigger and wider. So when a, an individual comes up in a regular normal trash truck, comes it out, wheels it out of the, yeah. the, the designated area, and then hand delivers it. it, it's a little bit more expensive to do it that way as opposed to getting a dumpster fill, dumpster dump. But uh, um, no. because they've got to make several trips, and it's a little bit more labor intensive. All right, I, I, I'm just kind of curious because we, we all, uh, as residents, um, residents, we all have two, uh, two bins. Yep. One for re recycling and one for regular trash. Yep. But this is going to be all, everywhere, pe people are just going to put everything in one bin? Oh, no, there will be. I know there will be multiple bins, but. 14 or 16 of them. But they won't differentiate between recycling and trash. Well, but that's because it's private. I'm sorry? That's because it's private. So you're not going to provide any recycling? No, we're it's all going to be in one. I'll no, we, we pay a private rate. No. Yeah. So Costello or someone else. They yes, they that's correct. Do the they, do the they do the picking. Yes, they do. They do that okay. part. Okay. And you said it's only going to be maybe a, maybe a, a dozen or 16 of these? Approximately 16. Okay. All right. Um, I was just kind of curious about you know, the uh, recycling. I get you. I get you. No, that's why we pay the big bucks. Okay. And I, and I understand your reasoning behind not having a, um, you know, a, um, what do you have? a bigger unit. Well, there's there seven, eight-yard dumpsters. And yeah. Um, why don't you touch upon, oh, I, another thing, too, is what about, um, are you going to have any area in this facility for people uh, who order items online and get delivered, you know, like a, a secured area for package pickups and things like that? What do you mean? Uh, well, uh, most likely you have to get, uh, visitors will have to get buzzed into the building so there'll be a microphone. Uh, no, but say somebody's not home and somebody's ordering something online, you know, from Amazon or whatever it is. Oh, we have a delivered. wall system where there's a key system where if there was a package, that package gets put into that larger box, and then that key gets put into <coughs> their personal little mailbox. Okay, so the, so there will be some accommodation. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, because I, I I think. Hey, if I don't offer the livability, people don't want to stay there. <laughs> no, I understand. <laughs> if, but and it, I I think that as more people do shopping online and they get these packages oh, yeah. delivered, yeah, um, there's a concern about just leaving them on, you know, either outside. Yeah. Or, or at just outside their their apartment door, you know. Definitely. So. That's why you know if you've been to like uh, West Scarborough's mailbox down in the bookstore there, if you get a larger package, there's a key in your small box. That key opens up the big box. Okay. You can't take that key back out, so that opens up, and that that box is about this big, so it takes big packages. Okay. Um, and why don't you just talk about the um, where this where there was going to be snow storage in the original plans, mm -hmm. and now there's not going to be in that area, apparently. What's going to happen to the snow? Uh, and and again, Roger, I thought we'd discuss this just a little bit because what we had was we were showing this area here so, snow storage. Excuse yeah. me, where are we? <coughs> right here. Now I have a sidewalk because again this was where the building had been for the trash. Now we have a sidewalk going along the end to the to the trash spot. Yeah. Again, how much snow we could have got in there would probably be debated to a certain degree. Okay. Uh, what we did discuss with Elliot, as you may recall, is down the street, down Stewart Drive, onto the left. He has a very big, basically it was going to be a field down there, um, and that you know obviously as snow was needed, he's part of the association. Everyone will be part of the association up there on an as-needed basis. That snow will be just down the street a little bit and, and dumped in that, that area. Um, 
So I imagine you have some sort of an, uh, an agreement or an arrangement with Elliot about all these different maintenance requirements and... Um, yes, there's associations all set up associated with that, but in terms of... I think they were all part of these, part of the, what had been submitted private. Again, I didn't go back into that, to be perfectly honest with you, because we were just looking at that one building. Um, but he's, he is part of, obviously, that association that takes care of all of the, uh, the parking lots and the landscape areas that are on the top. Um, okay, I'll let Sue handle the sign. <laughs> I actually am not going to say anything about the sign. <laughs> Susan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's not true. I have to say something about the sign. I don't think it makes one difference one way or the other, but it isn't really a very classy thing to do, okay? Secondly, I really like this one over here that's a different color. You see what you're showing me on the, on the stand? It's there. It's not the same color that I'm holding. Yeah, I, so, but you see, I want to know which color I'm getting. <laughs> Because this is this is definitely not giving the same kind of presentation that that is. This is a very boring building. Architecturally, it has nothing going for it at all. The only thing that it can have that will improve it would be a sense of a little bit of sophistication. And that coloring, in my book, is more sophisticated than, than this. The tones, whatever. Susan, so the I, I think the printout that you may have when you. When you send these back and forth, yeah. Which one? Which one, you, which one are you? Which one are you in favor of? That one or this one? It's, it's like a desert sand beige color, um, with one contrasting tone to another. Um, <coughs> I, uh, Susan, I I would really like to to maybe touch on something that you just said, and uh, these these rents in here are going to be starting at eight ninety five. Let me interrupt because okay. I should have gone to that point first. Yes. Okay. This looks to me as if it would be a wonderful opportunity for affordable housing. Oh, it's, it's market rate affordable housing with no with private funds. True, but by offering single bedroom space, you drop it down to something that people can actually think about affording, as opposed to other opportunities in Scarborough, and I think that that's something that we need very badly. We, yes, I could very easily push this meeting past <laughs> 1030 with giving you data yep. on tenants. No, I understand, but I think what stay. you're doing, I hope you realize that I'm very enthusiastic about the fact oh, yes. that you're providing I am too. smaller spaces. And, and not only that, but for, for these tenants to be able to have the opportunity to be in an area that has a park with Elliot's. Mr. Chamberlain is providing. Exactly. This is a gold mine for a tenant. It is. So my comments on the architecture is just to try to make sure that it's as much as we can without putting a financial burden on you, make it blend really I'll give, well. I'll with give you there. a brief, just an absolute brief, brief. Uh -huh. Every $93,000 spent on this project of this size equals $50 more per month per tenant. That will equal a dollar, and to have it at affordability, that equals a dollar sixteen more per hour this yeah. tenant has to make. I'm making and this. The entrance entry level for this tenant, for the for my eight ninety fives, is fourteen dollars an hour. I understand. It's color. It's not okay. redesigning the building. It's color. Oh, okay. It's, that's all it really is. It's just a matter of that what's already been approved before it changed into you know you yeah. coming in. Um, well, Mr. Chamberlain and I have talked about, because he's building four, three units up front to make sure that our colors match, you know, okay. um, that are consistent. Okay, I think I've made my point. I'd be on that, fine. Okay. But I really do want to make sure that you're aware that we should have more of this in, in Scarborough. I'm a, I am a big <laughs> proponent of the fact that we need to do something, and I'm not talking about just talking, doing something. Oh, absolutely. About affordable housing. I, there's not too, I too many. If you're willing to take that on, you yes. deserve a lot of credit for that. Well, thank you very much. There's not too many uh, I investors sl uh, slash builders slash uh, developer uh, and oh, person that owns their management company. There's a few different hats there that no, we know. usually aren't combined. <coughs> One more quick note and then I'm done. Um, we are going to re you're going to take the 
previously approved landscaping and then just modify it a little so that it fits here. Would you make sure you actually create a new landscaping plan? Uh, we will, Susan, and I will get that to staff, absolutely, the, um, yes, and again, and I just didn't want to go through that exercise, <laughs> obviously we came here and can we move this, can we slide that, because like I say, it's really going to be taking that landscape and then just we did that making with it fit. garbage, so we don't have to do it with architecture. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> anyway, thank you. I'm all set. Thank you. Uh, I think, yeah, Katie, I, did you still have something? Yeah, I actually did just have a question that popped in my mind, actually, at the outset of your presentation. I remember when the building was first approved, one of the things that was talked about with, with regards to air handling units and those sorts of things was they were actually going to be on the roof. Um, and I don't know that I've heard that discussion or seen on the plans yet where those are going to be located. Um, AC units are talking, Jay? Uh, I think it was, uh, there was just the host of mechanics were going to be on the roof. As I remember, it was going to be sort of a faux, you know, it was going to be almost a mansard roof previously. Yeah, there is um, and no, when you showed the there, yeah, there's no AC in this building. Okay. There'll be an individual thing. Okay. Um, it's once again, do you want AC? When you get into that affordable category, do you want to pay $50 a month, especially during the winter, to have some AC? And I guess the reason I was asking the question was if there are going to be any ground mounted units, if there's any. Uh, transformer no. pads that aren't currently located, if there's anything like that. Actually, you brought up your um, uh, the mailboxes. You yeah. know, sounds like a great idea. So where's that located? In that our lobby. That's in the lobby. Okay. Yep. So, yep. Um, oh, uh, heating units. Heating. heating, right, the heating. They're room. inside our utility room Okay. that are attached to the back of the building. What about see? tanks? Is, what's it running on? The tanks are underground. That's one of the reasons. Right. Okay. And so that was really the question, was any of these mechanicals yep. that if there is going to be anything, the air exchange want unit, the air exchange unit is done through the uh, bathroom fan. Okay. So. No, that's a good point, and I had yeah. didn't hit that upon on my letter at all, okay. so I appreciate you bringing that up. So picking up on, the, on that question, I'm glad you, you did raise it. Um, when you say um, that air conditioning would be an individual thing, are you talking about, like, people putting uh, units in their windows or... Or how, what, are you, what are you envisioning there? No, it would clearly state in our lease that it would be a floor mount with just okay. the, the, the little strip that goes on the bottom. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, and again, I, as Susan said, I think we appreciate yeah. and understand the importance of this kind of, you know, naturally occurring affordable housing, so to speak. Well, a little um, bit of, um, uh, you know, thanks also needs to go to Mr. Chamberlain mm -hmm. for the opportunity to, for our, our concept. You know, me and my family's concept to come into his, his concept, and he obviously could have gone in a different direction with luxury and high end and this and that. And so I think these tenants are going to really, really be happy. 50% right. uh, of my tenants have stayed with me for more than 12 years. So Great. that's. Yeah. So, in that vein, then, and, and I, you know, I, I get a little uncomfortable sometimes when we get overly prescriptive and on really subjective things like color and signage and there are certain things that um, certain things that we need to make sure we enforce in terms of design standards particularly in certain districts for certain types of uh, buildings um, we have sort of campus type settings that where we want to try to make sure we're tying things in reasonably um, this this one is a, you know, a little bit in that direction in that you know you're sort of buying in so to speak into a into a, a pre-approved area, and I, I do appreciate that you. It sounds like you're making you made that effort with Mr. Chamberlain to try and tie things in and have it be complementary. Um, you know, I, if, uh, I'd appreciate, and I know the board will appreciate if you'll you know continue to think hard about color choices and things like that, and think about signage. I personally don't want to again get overly prescriptive on that. Um, it's ultimately sort of subjective. Um, and I don't, I don't feel comfortable substituting my judgment for anyone else's on those sorts of things, um, at least in a case like this. So, um, uh, that said, um, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, I appreciate the willingness to continue to look at that and to pro provide the uh, the new landscaping plan. I'm not going to say anything about trash bins because I think we <laughs> covered that one very well. Um, and with that. Um, you know, we do have a, a motion here that I would like to uh, put forward for 
for conditional approval. Um, I move to approve the project titled Dunstan Village Residential, Building H5, proposed by Burnham Brookside LLC, as depicted on plan set prepared by Sebago Technics, dated October 9th, 2017, with the following findings and conditions. Findings as stated. Uh, conditions, number one, prior to issuance of a building permit, the plan, plan set shall be revised to include A, the correct number of proposed parking spaces, B, a revised landscaping plan which coordinates with the storm drain system, C, a detailed description including color renderings of the proposed fence being used to screen the trash collection area, D, approval by the Scarborough <laughs> Sanitary District is required, and E, revised plan notation to ensure consistency in referencing types of units, which gets to what we uh, Oh, the note, yes, about. yes, yes. Right. Good. Uh, and the second condition, prior to the start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer, and their site contractor, and is to be coordinated through the planning department. That's the motion. Looking for a second? I am looking for a second. You got yes. it. <laughs> Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you very much. We appreciate your time tonight. All right. Last but not least, <coughs> item number 10, Pine Point Animal Hospital requests a site plan review for 12 Pine Point Road, Assessor's Map U34, Lot 22A. Okay. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. As you just know, this is a site plan amendment um, for an addition to the existing animal hospital on Pine Point Road. Um, it's actually a 720 square foot plus or minus addition, um, which uh, incorporates, uh, it's sort of it's replacing a few parking spaces and then there's some other parking lot modifications to accommodate. Um, Staff did note in our in our uh, plan or in our comments, I should say, that the original site was approved in 05. It was actually contemplated for an addition of a similar size to this on the back side of the building, <coughs> on the um, uh, opposite side that's being proposed currently. Um, and so they're before you to actually um, uh, do the addition in the front. So as I noted, you should have received. Uh, not only planning staff comments, but comments from Woodard and Kern as well. Um, one of the main elements in staff comments that we don't have an answer to yet um, is that our commercial code and fire inspector wants to be sure that there's adequate access for an emergency vehicle to get in and around the site. Um, and, and we haven't seen um, uh, any response to that one yet, which I'm sure they're uh, prepared to speak to tonight. Um, other comments we reference have to do with sort of landscape details in terms of coordinating, uh, you know, sort of some existing features that are in front of the building, uh, maybe uh, mimicking those or trying to echo, echo what's there. And there is uh, actually one proposed new parking spot that looks like it would uh, displace an existing tree and is there an opportunity to either relocate or replace that tree because um, it does seem to provide some buffering and, and aesthetics to abutting properties. And then the other main element is just ensuring that uh, we did receive the, uh, the uh, elevations of the structure, but be sure that the materials are consistent. They generally look consistent, but we just, they weren't noted on the plans. That would be the same siding and the same roof type. So um, just want to be sure that that is all coordinated because, again, this falls under sort of that renovations and additions provisions of our design standards. Um, Again, uh, you have a host of comments from us. And with that, I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Jay. And I'll turn it over to the applicant's representative. Hello, my name is Paul Monyok. I'm civil engineer, and I work with WBRC Architects and Engineers. And it is a pleasure to be here at Scarborough. Uh, this is my first time before this planning board. <coughs> um, I did receive the comments. We are working on written responses that we will provide to you. However, we didn't want to rush those to you and have them show up the night of the meeting. Um, and I'd rather just stand here and explain them to you and I will follow up with that written uh, response. Um, so as it was stated, this project is a small addition. The building's 2,000 square feet. This is 720 square feet. 
the addition is to increase the functionality of the actual animal hospital. It will not increase the amount of patients, nor will it increase the amount of employees. It just simply adds to what they already do. Um, I do have a floor plan here. Uh, I can pass this around as well as I have a large one here. I can show and talk with you. Um, <coughs> Uh, basically, the addition is on the west side of the, the plan that you see here, uh, with the front entrance being at this location. Uh, the addition is a restroom and a break room on one side, surgery prep adjacent to the current surgery room, and the addition of an office for the veterinarians that are there. There's also an increase in the workroom. Uh, so as you can see, the exam rooms remain, reception, waiting rooms, all of that's unchanged. Uh, and as was stated, we have an elevation as well. I have submitted that. This floor plan was not developed at the time uh, uh, to a point where I was satisfied for submission. So that's why it has been developed at this time. The idea is that this building replicates more of a house than it does a commercial building. Uh, with that said, the addition is going to mimic exactly the house in terms of the finishes, uh, the siding, the asphalt shingles, and the windows. Therefore, it will look like it was always there once they're complete with this addition. <coughs> so that was the first comment in terms of site plan submission, the floor plans. Um, the next one, the internal vehicle circulation, the site turnaround and access. Again, <clears throat> because of the location of this addition, as you can see, parking was displaced, paved parking areas. And so we wanted to maintain the same number of parking spaces for this facility because they work for the applicant. They do exceed the ordinance requirement. So in order to put this addition, we had to relocate some parking spaces and that's what you see here in terms of what's happening. Um, so in terms of the turnaround, we will certainly um, discuss this with the emergency personnel. The, ro the access in does not really change. Uh, there is a small area here in the back for a hammerhead. I don't know that you can have a fire truck turn around there, but <coughs> smaller emergency vehicles can certainly use that. I will note again that the parking exceeds the required number and that there are some spaces that are always available. Um, part of what happens is when there's snow removal, uh, the snow is piled up in some of those parking spaces, so they've accounted for that. Um, the other, some of the other comments, landscaping and buffering uh, is certainly our plan as this being an amended plan. We do not want to alter the landscape if we can. However, there is a row of bushes along this edge of the building. The idea is to replicate those along the new um, proposed addition. I don't believe we'll be able to transplant because they are quite large and I'm not sure they would take. Um, and the same with this tree. We're afraid that we are, have disrupted the root system too much for it to actually stay. If it can, we'll keep it. If not, we have all intentions of replacing that tree. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear that <coughs> uh, we are absolutely going to do that. And then the other part about landscaping that falls into the riprap, uh, along the back here there is a swale and it's a steep slope off the back of the building. Uh, because we're disturbing this area as we dig the hole for the foundation, um, the best way is to, to have the slope stabilization with the riprap and get that back and, and it will match the rest of that riprap there. Um, so that's really the, the reason for that riprap as well as um, this I can get into more when we get to the stormwater aspect of it. The, uh, I wanted to note, I think it, the, the note was that we show a decrease in peak flow rate. Um, so I just wanted to reiterate, we're not showing an increase in the peak flow rate. 
um, and that the channel that is there is established and the flows are handled there um, and the impervious area that is increased is um, basically the parking was replaced with building in this area and the increase is over here and that runs down a small channel into this low-lying area <coughs> behind the building. Um, that actually increases the time of concentration for that stormwater to reach that lower area. Um, and then in, in terms of the sizing of the riprap, the idea is to maintain what's already there and match what's there for riprap. Uh, we didn't provide sizing calculations, but a lot of those rocks are in the 8 to 12 inch size, which is what we standard typically do, um, and we would do the same. Uh, we can certainly provide calculations if that's required, um, but again, showing that it works now in the existing conditions will maintain that. Um, the roof drainage was a comment as well. This entire roof is pitched and it drips off onto the landscaped area here and the riprap in the back. There are no gutters, there's no internal drains or external roof drains. Uh, this new addition will be the same. It will just drip onto the land and run down into the low-lying areas. Um, so that's the clarification there. Uh, existing foundation drain. Um, again, this is an amended site plan. My company did not do the initial plan. Uh, and in terms of as built. Um, there's limited information, but we do know that um, we've seen a pipe back here um, and we believe that tying into the foundation drain, it will connect and exit in the same location. There's really no opportunity out front for um, connection, so that's the plan there. The, um, there was a comment about needing approval from the sanitary district. Um, I guess I can, I can talk later with staff about that, but we are not proposing to increase any stormwater flow because there are no new employees or um, actual uh, clients. Uh, we are adding a restroom, but it will be used by the same number of people. So um, if we need to, we can certainly talk with the sanitary district about that. Um, we do, uh, we, we noticed a comment about the dumpster fencing. The dumpster has been in place. Um, but we are more than happy to provide a dumpster fence and we do have details for all the erosion control as well as the dumpster fence. Um, basically it's what my company typically uses which is a six foot fence. We tend to go with the cedar stockade on a metal frame. Um, the PVC plastic looks nice but in a commercial application, when it's cold, it tends to break and, and splay and it does not look good in a few years, whereas this more um, wood stockade will take a beating and still look fairly nice. Um, but we can certainly alter that if anyone feels the need to do something different. Um, like I said, we <coughs> because this is going to be a hole for foundations only and we are minimal disruption, um, we have placed some silt fence around the back. I don't know how much of that will, will reach there. Um, the idea is to pour foundations, backfill. This is a slab on grade type of construction. Uh, we do have infiltration silt fence um, in the catch basins as well. Uh, and I have a detail for that. These are all best management practices from the main DEP manual. And um, we have all the other construction details here available ready to uh, provide to the town for their use. Uh, real quick, touching on the Woodard and Curran comments, um, they had similar comments on details, which we now have the drainage for the roof, which I just touched on, and erosion sediment control. Uh, not only do we have the details, but I have a sheet on the front here, which is general notes to the contractor, and these all come from the main DEP manual, uh, as well as um, I have a basic standards narrative that I can provide as well. Um, and then there was also a comment about the um, condition of the current stormwater and if maybe this is an opportunity to um, provide maintenance, we can certainly do that. Again, it's riprap. What happens is the water um, reaches this area. It's allowed to build up somewhat before it overflows and goes down. 
in terms of the peak flow increase, we raised the amount of water that can be stored in that area before it's discharged by increasing the elevation of that. So um, while they're there, they can certainly pull out the old riprap, clean it out, and place, replace with new riprap if, if that's what is deemed necessary. Um, so at this time, I, I would like to just open it up to your questions, and, I, and I'd love to answer those for you. Thank you. I'm going to go on a limb and say there's no public comment. <laughs> all right. Um, well, I appreciate the, uh, it, we all appreciate the concise kind of point by point review of the staff sure. comments. It's always helpful. And thanks for sticking around and waiting to the end yeah. here. If I, if I could add one more thing, I just, just to make it clear, um, it looks like there's a number of waiver requests. And really, it's as I was filling out the checklist. Um, because it's an amendment of a previous site plan, we didn't want to um, ha have it just be an exercise of, of reproducing paperwork that you may already have on file. We could certainly do that if you need to, but we felt we could just state that that information is on file or, it, you know, is, is not necessarily a, because it is just a building addition, we didn't necessarily um, <coughs> want to get into those kinds of paperwork items. Sure, yeah, and it sounds like you are generally pretty aware of those items that you need to continue to work with staff mm -hmm. on and I'm sure we may have uh, a couple of specific questions here. But, sure. Um, what do you want to go first? Just put it up for grabs at this point. Susan? Um, the present space is maintained very nicely. I was a little concerned the first time for the first change but it worked out really well. I have no doubt that this will work out really well. It's Here's a little ho-ho. If you look at this, there are six places to examine, I assume it's dogs, and one cat exam and cat waiting area. I noticed that. Now, I got three cats if I bring them. <laughs> doesn't matter. I just got, thought it was kind of funny. It's labeled for cats. Um, you could look at it as an, a cat's an easier client, maybe. I don't know. Or more difficult. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, Landscaping around the new addition, are we going to be doing it? But we are removing whatever is there now. I, I can't figure out what it was, but there was something that's going to be taken out. And yeah, I looked at the pictures. Um, it was hard for me to determine exactly what that bush <laughs> is. It, it's some sort of deciduous bush. Um, I'm not sure if it was like the, a butterfly bush or something like that. But put something back? Yes, we will absolutely um, put something back. Okay. Uh, the doctors who, main, or who own this facility are very prideful of, of their facility. Okay, and I'm that's sure. good. Yeah. And I'm sure that you will replace the tree if you can. Yes. That would be great. I always like to try and keep it if I can because you cannot replace the maturity. But, but you know, we are, if we're nothing if not really careful about landscaping. Mm -hmm. I think that most of the other questions you you answered quite nicely for me. I'm going to wait and see how the stormwater management comes up because I don't have to think about stormwater management on this on this board. It's wonderful. Um, I don't think I have any other problems. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. I don't really have so much to say. I think um, I think the staff brought up a number of um, areas to be. Be uh, considered, and it seems to me that you have considered those, and, and you're, you're responding to those. So I don't. I mean, I went down and looked at the place, and it looks pretty good to me. And, uh, I don't think it's that much of a big disruption as to what they're going to be doing based on the existing operation. So I'm fine with it. All right. Thank you. Next. Yeah, I just want to say um, I'm okay with all of the labor requests <coughs> um, that are listed in here. Uh, unless staff feels it's necessary to request something in particular, I, but most of this really is applicable to bigger, newer projects where you're just doing an addition. So, um, my other question for you would be: Can a fire truck actually turn around in your spot now? I don't believe it can. No. So we're really not changing anything on that front, right? No. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Thanks, Thanks Nick. Robin. Yeah, so I was wondering why you didn't have an erosion and sedimentation control plan, you know, but I guess you're kind of addressing it now. Sure. Um, but also in the checklist, you said that you didn't need to provide one? 
Um, if I did, that was by mistake. Uh, I always <laughs> provide a sediment okay. erosion control. Uh, we are basically digging a hole, and I don't imagine too much will get offsite, but there will be stockpiles of material, so the contractor and will need to be cognizant of it. Some things like that. Sure. Sure. Okay, so talk to me about the stormwater feature that you currently have. It's just a detention area and it's all riprap? Right. We, because um, it's such a small site, we're not subjected to any sort of um, DP, whether that be the uh, stormwater or the, the SLOTA. Uh, so we're really just required to meet the peak runoff that the town requires. Right. Um, what was in place was basically... Um, I believe it's retention in that it holds the water back and then it slowly leaks out through the riprap and continues down the swale. It can hold a certain volume of water from what we could detect from the contours that are there. Uh, so the increase in flow, we increase the volume that could be retained in that riprap bowl before it's released um, downstream. The other part, as I was mentioning, um, we displaced impervious area and added new impervious area. but the building, uh, the time of concentration off the roof down and into that back swale was increased as well as where that impervious area, it has to run across the front lawn, down the ditch and into that riprap. So when we ran the model, and I do have HydroCAD calculations. Yeah, no, and I, I saw it. I yeah. will certainly, yeah. yeah. No, I saw um, it in the back. But you. so it was, it was more of a time of concentration and it's such a small change. It, it's, when you do the modeling, it doesn't necessarily reflect it, but. Yeah, and I, the one thing I, I just wanted to um, ensure, too, is when you were talking about that time of concentration across, I don't know if it's the back lawn or the front lawn, kind of a thing in there, but um, er, that's going to maintain, like, lawn or be vegetated kind that's of right. thing. That's right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, the, right. Um, we were able to kind of get that parking in there with minimal impact again, because it is fairly flat from the front out to the road, uh, so we can kind of just place that in purpose area for that new parking. And, um, yeah, and thank you for touching on one of the questions I had too, which were about all the waiver requests mm -hmm. that you yeah. have in here yeah. that, you know, d for example, did you say you're going to have a waiver request from your signage because there's no new sign that's proposed? Yeah, it's, it's the one that's there we will maintain and there's okay. nothing new going up. So, okay, so uh, I would just maybe elaborate, elaborate. yep, sure. just okay. a little bit yeah, because absolutely. we're not necessarily wanting to give out all these waivers. Okay, yeah, kind of sure, thing. absolutely. And, yeah. I, and I can assure you that, you know, the landscaping plan is mm -hmm. something that my colleagues mm -hmm. will, uh, sure. and myself will want to see as well. Traffic analysis, I know you said that, you know, traffic analysis, and I think this is also related a little bit to the Scarborough Sanitary District approval. I know that you're saying that it's the same number of people who work mm -hmm. there and it's a similar number <laughs> of clients, but to me it seems like the clients are going to increase because if you have more exam and surgery rooms mm -hmm. kind of a thing, mm -hmm. there may be an increase okay. in both sanitary yeah. and traffic. So just a okay. thought there, but okay. um, overall I, I think um, it's great to have a, a, a local business be as successful as they are mm -hmm. to, to do this right. kind of expansion. Right. So Absolutely. Thanks for all your hard work. Sure, thank you. Thanks, Robin. Rachel? Yeah, I, I noted that there was only one exam room for cats, but at least the cat got the window. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, uh, it, it makes them a little happier. Um, I do have just a, a caution on that removal of the tree to put in an extra parking space, uh, and that when I've been accustomed to drive in there to park in the first available space that's currently there. It's a very tight turning radius yes, it and, and it's not easy to get into and you're proposing an even tighter right. turning radius for that extra extra mm -hmm. site. Yes. Uh, so you're going to have cars out there that are kind of doing three point turns and jockeying mm -hmm. back and forth or in my case a nine point turn trying <laughs> to get in there. Uh, so I just um, I just say, you know, kind of take a look at that because sure, it, it sure. really is a kind of tight area and it does take down a very nice tree. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I, I, one of the things I should point out is um, when I was speaking with the owners of the facility, uh, they had mentioned that the, the ones closest to the, the front door are so important because uh, a lot of times people bring in animals that are injured and they want to get in as soon as they can and, and that, that animal is frazzled a little bit so the, the quicker they can get from their car. So that's kind of why they really were pushing for that spot, but I agree it's, it's, it's a very difficult one to get into. So 
Um, if that's the case, maybe maybe people won't use it. So. All set. Rick. Um, I think it looks good. I like that they actually have the surgery prep area because mm -hmm. a lot of places don't have that. So yeah. That's just a comment on that. Um, yeah. Oh, no, I don't have nothing. I think it looks fine. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty much in the same boat. Um, don't really have anything to add beyond what fellow board members have already said. Uh, got some good clarification on a couple of things. Look into the emergency access question. Um, maybe sort of continued uh, conformance there, but we'll see. Um, and again, yeah, I agree. It's, it's, a, it's a great local business, and um, I'm glad to see that it's being expanded in a thoughtful way. And I uh, did appreciate the opportunity to look at the floor plans just to give us a little fuller picture of sure. what it is that's happening there. And as you can see, we we pay uh, attention to detail when it comes to the, the labeling on those things. Absolutely. Um, and thanks again for the, uh, the, the uh, sort of running through things, including little details like the, the uh, dumpster fencing and so forth. So beyond that, um, you obviously have uh, more homework to do, and we'll look forward to seeing it next time. Okay, great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. <coughs> We have a planner's staff report. Uh, I do not have anything to report. Uh, Angela, do you have anything to touch on? No. Not that. Okay. Administrative amendment report. Uh, I do not believe we've granted any administrative approvals this last couple weeks. I concur. All right, no. that's good. <laughs> do not remember any. Uh, any planning board correspondence beyond the, the email that we referenced earlier? No. Uh, actually, if I might, just one thing I want, um, I was asked to pass on to the board. Um, George Kerr and his daughter Ashley Kerr own a piece of property on Route 1, um, at sort of just beyond the Blue Point Road, if you will. Uh, if you're heading out of town, it would be on the left-hand side. It's a commercial lot. They are likely to be coming to this board in the near future for a... <coughs> excuse me, a, um, uh, for a site plan review, and presumably they're looking for approval. <laughs> um, but he did mention that he wanted to start clearing some of the trees ahead of time. We had, there's nothing in our ordinance that says you can't clear trees. I did tell him that you can't sort of regrade the site in any way. Um, but he, to, but just, he wanted to let the board know that if you do stand the activity down there and an application comes forward, he's not no trying. Problem. What's that? No wetlands? Um, he, he's, uh, there's no, he's not in the resource protection, he, and if he's not going to be uh, disturbing wetlands of greater than 4,300 square feet. Uh, so, you know, he's made aware that, you know, typically, you know, we, like I said, anyone who owns a lot can clear trees. And so um, he just wanted to let this board know that um, that's, that's likely to occur before he comes before you. Um, and so he's perfectly within his right to do that, but he felt it was important to let you know uh, that that was occurring. Right. So that was it. Thank you. Any other comments? <coughs> yes, Susan. I'll take a couple of seconds to <coughs> to say that I'm, I feel badly that I didn't talk to this our applicant about how pleased I was with his I, I'm going to call it affordable housing effort before talking about the architecture because that was not nearly as important as the fact that he's actually taking it upon himself to do something that mm -hmm. I really don't think anybody in Scarborough has ever really done before. Mm -hmm. And I am, I volunteer at Project Grace and as you may know we, we do deal a lot with people who need a lot of help even though we're not a crisis line and the number of times that I have to say I cannot help you with anything that has to do with housing. It's painful. It's really, really painful, and especially in a town like Scarborough that's got so many resources. So I'm personally going to be looking for more ways to encourage affordable housing. I'm sure that when the comp plan people come back that they're going to have things to say about affordable housing. But I just think that as a board it doesn't hurt to you know, publicly state 
that we know this is an issue and we would like to have anybody who's got any ideas about what we might be able to do about that to come and talk to us. And I'm looking forward to a site walk with Bessie. Okay. Thank you. I agree about the affordable housing and, and partly because we often end up talking about it when it's a requirement, when it's either after the fact or it's a, it's a built-in requirement for something which can serve a purpose, but um, when there are opportunities to, to uh, facilitate different types of housing stock that can be more kind of naturally affordable. I think that's good too. So, and yes, we look forward to scheduling our sidewalk. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Probably going to be fairly aggressive about trying to get that sidewalk yep. established within the next week to 10 days um, to take advantage of both weather and diminishing daylight and the fact that I know the applicants probably going to want to get back before you pretty quickly as well. So right. um, I will, we will, Jamel and I will work to put out a doodle poll or some such thing that gives you multiple options. So, all right. Anyway. Good. Roger. Uh, Angela Wong, forgive me if I don't mention the Transportation Committee. <laughs> Last Thursday evening we had a three-hour meeting. <laughs> Record breaker. Um, and uh, <laughs> we discussed the uh, Pine Point intersection, you know, East Grand, the intersection there, down where the uh, Grand Barbecue is. Um, pretty exhaustive discussion about what, you know, what's going on down there, the planning. And then we spent the other half of the time uh, on the first phase of 114, Gorham Road, going out to Maple Avenue, discussing right turn lanes, left turn lanes, dedicated lanes and things like that. Um, I'm, I'm really, um, I'm so impressed with that committee because they really do a lot of in-depth analysis and discussions and it's, uh, it's occurred to me that this, uh, this rather small committee has a pretty significant impact on the community and I hope the community pays attention to what's going on. Thank you. My two cents. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Roger. Anyone else? All right, I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Thank you.